welcome everybody to Angel Stadium here in Southern California. A beautiful evening for baseball. And certainly these fans are hoping it's a beautiful evening for their Angels. The AL West champion Angels losing game one yesterday to the AL wildcard winning Boston Red Sox. Hi everybody, I'm Chris Berman. Glad you could be with us for game two of the Sox Angels series. Well, the Red Sox yesterday came as advertised. They're a team that scored the most runs of any team in baseball, and they bashed the Angels by the count of 9-3. Their new look has an ace, Kurt Schilling, or in Orlando Cabrera at shortstop, flashing the leather, paid immediate dividends. The Anaheim Angels, frankly, did not come as advertised. They were sloppy. They were uneasy. We certainly don't expect the same from them tonight. But their new looks, if you will, Vladimir Guerrero, 0 for yesterday. And tonight, starter Bartolo Colon and Game 3 starter Kelvin Escobar, their new look on the mound, they have to pay dividends. But in speaking of pitching, we have with us a man that's won a Cy Young Award, Rick Sutcliffe and Sut, a guy that's won three of them is Pedro Martinez. Look, the last decade he's had Hall of Fame-type caliber career, but he's coming off arguably the worst month of his career. Which Pedro do we see tonight? Well, I think we're going to kind of see a guy in between that. One closer to the Cy Young Award guy, but he talks about the baseball not feeling right in his hand. He's a fingertip control guy. He talks about that being the part of the fingertip you use to push the doorbell. It's also the part you need for the rotation on the curveball, the location on the fastball. It hasn't been there. But Pedro Martinez is a man with a lot of pride, and Boomer, he usually finds a way. He's got it in his gut. You know that. Uh, certainly a man with a lot of pride. Again, that's one eight batting titles is Tony Gwynn and Tony. Tonight, Bartolo Colon had a huge start Friday in a big game at Oakland. He's been excellent the second half, but this is his biggest start as an Anaheim Angel. He's pitched in the postseason before with Cleveland. That being said, what do you expect from him tonight on the mound? Well, personally, I, I expect him to throw like he's thrown the second half of the season. The first half, no question, was a struggle for him. Five and eight, six point five seven ERA, twenty six home runs allowed. The second seventeen starts, thirteen and four, three point six five ERA, and only twelve home runs allowed. In order for him to have success tonight, he's going to have to be able to throw all three of his pitches and throw them in the strike zone. Because if he doesn't, this is an offensive club that the Red Sox have that can do some. Well, we know Cologne is outstanding stuff. We know that Pedro Martinez is an outstanding pitcher. And why do I have the feel, guys? Seven six six five ish tonight. I, I just I just have that feel. What we're saying is, don't go to bed. We got bashers. Hey, Anaheim hit the ball yesterday as well. Didn't just show up on the scoreboard. Long ball. Red Sox have it. Sox Angels game two coming up. Goosey Red Sox. Johnny Damon quoted it, of course, he meant it in a different way. Hey, we're just a happy bunch of idiots playing baseball. Uh, they're the best baseball playing idiots that we've seen in a long time. But they've just played the song Calling All Angels, and Anaheim knows. Hey, look, this 0 and 1 thing works. It did, as we said, with all three series in 2002, and they came back to win them all, obviously, win the World Series. But losing two at home would be another question. Johnny Damon. Leading off at a couple of hits yesterday. Mark Bellhorn is at second base again with 0 for 4. Manny Ramirez hit an absolute bomb, a three-run homer. 2 for 5, hitting third. David Ortiz, 1 for 3, drove in the first run of the game yesterday. Trot Nixon didn't play yesterday. He gets the start in right field. Kevin Millar looking Don Manningly like at first base. Heaven forbid he hit a two-run shot. Jason Veritek had a hit yesterday, hitting seventh. Orlando Cabrera, the shortstop, had a hit yesterday, hitting eighth. And the batting champ of a year ago hits ninth. That would be Billy Miller. He went over yesterday, going up against the big, and I do mean big, right-handed starter for the Anaheim Angels. That would be Bartolo Colon. When you look at the numbers for Colon, just six and eight at the All-Star break, you have to understand the man was hurt. He had a bad ankle. He had a bad back. His mechanics were nowhere near what he was used to. But to his credit, he never missed the start. He could not throw between starts, but yet he kept taking his turn. This is the biggest turn he will ever take for the Anaheim Angels. Now, defense, we saw the Angels, Tony, struggle yesterday, uncharacteristic. Mike Sosha, the skippers, made a couple of changes in the starting line. Yeah, he decided to put McPherson over at third base and move Figgins from third base to second base. You know, and it's it's not that, you know, uh, uh, 
I don't want it to seem like he's moving Figgins to second base to kind of take some of the heat off, but I think he feels like offensively, you know, they're going to they're going to have to swing the bats a little bit, and McPherson's more of an offensive guy. He's only played 11 games at third base, but, you know, they feel like this is probably going to be their best unit for tonight's game. Could be a big gamble, the youngster at third base. He's fielding okay. Figgins is a better second baseman than he is third baseman, according to the managers. But I think it's the right gamble to make, Boomer, because even if Cologne is at his best, you know the Boston Red Sox are going to score some runs. Yep. Anaheim has to find a way. Absolutely. Now, we said it yesterday that... I thought Johnny Damon would be the key to this series. Now, by the time he started getting his hits yesterday, Washburn was out, and they had a comfortable lead. So he did get two hits, stole a base, but here's a guy that he has hit well throughout his career. And I asked him why, as the lone starts in the second, he goes, I don't know, I got lucky. Like, a, like he says, we're just a happy bunch of idiots <laughs> playing baseball. <laughs> uh, I did never buy that. You know, this game, there is some luck involved, but there's also some skill. Well, as soon as Washburn came out of there yesterday, Damon hit two balls right on the screws for base hits. You had the hard ground ball, the third that Figgins ended up throwing away. But uh, so I agree with you, Chris. I think he's going to be the key to the Red Sox getting something off, getting something generated on the offensive end. I don't believe in a lot of these numbers, but when you pitch a, a hit against the guy 40 times, 15 for 40 is 375. And will yes, there's another hit off of. And that, he says, I'm just very lucky. Vladimir Guerrero gimping around and right as Garrett Anderson is gimping in center. You know, that I want to say there are holes out there, but this is not the ground normally covered by these fellas. Yeah, both of those guys are, are, are kind of banged up right now. and But they're both gamers. They want to be out there. And honestly, it's an opportunity for the Red Sox. You know, maybe you try to put some pressure on them, especially early in the game. Although I did talk to Damon about running, and he says... For right-handers, Cologne is about as good as it gets in the American League. He goes, he's a big guy. You figure he's going to have his big one. He says his slide step is excellent. He goes, do not assume what you see is what you get. Damon says he's outstanding holding guys on. We'll see. He's certainly taking his time to do that with him. He recognizes right off the bat. He got ahead of him. You know, made a pretty good pitch. Damon just fought it off and dropped the base hit in the right field. And, you know, let's see how the Red Sox play. Let's see if they bunt him up, allow him to maybe run. Mark Bellhorn looks at ball one. Yeah, I don't look for the bunt right now, Tony. I think this is where Mark Bellhorn will run into some of those 17 home runs. You saw the divided attention from Cologne. I mean, I've been that guy on the mound. You know that your your attention is kind of split, and if you make a mistake, I mean, Bellhorn can turn it around. That's fouled off. Just case in point, and we're not going to cite these numbers all night long because you can go nuts reading some of these stats, but Damon has had success. There's a base hit. Three for nine base dealers against Cologne this year. First of all, they'd only run on a big guy nine times already tells you something. Yeah. And so, and there's Damon's numbers. Of course, he leads the Red Sox, but then again, that's a team that primarily is running underwater when it comes to stealing <laughs> bases, except for him. What are we looking for out of Cologne here in the first inning or two set to make you know that he's either on or maybe a little off? We're looking for a zero. We're looking for a zero if you're an Anaheim Angel fan in the top of the first inning so that he can settle down. Right now, you get down in the bullpen, you have control of your fastball, curveball, and chain, but you don't have control of that adrenaline. He made a mistake on the 0-2 pitch. He's in the hole now. There's a base hit by Bellhorn. Again, not a, a thumper, but two base hits, and now Manny Ramirez is up. The other thing that happens here with Damon getting that base hit, it really kind of puts Cologne in a situation where he's got to throw fastballs. And this is a fastball he wanted to get off the plate, and it's really not that bad a pitch. Bellhorn just goes with it, hits it off the end of the bat, and, and, and drops it in the left field for a base hit. So, you know, if you're, if you're the Red Sox, you're feeling pretty good about this first inning opportunity again. You scored a run yesterday in the first. And today you're already coming up to the plate. You got Manny Ramirez coming up to the plate with a chance of knocking a run. Manny had a three-run homer in that uh, touchdown and extra point fourth inning for Boston, which just about the side of the game. Ramirez scoring two runs, scored the first run of the game. 
after Manny legged down a double. Off the glove of Figgins, and then Mezica couldn't come up with Ortiz's little bleeder, and that's how they scored with small ball. And then they went long ball in the fourth. Alone to Ramirez. Fouled in the booth next to us. Aren't many areas where you try to work him, huh, Set? I mean, you're on the mound. Where are you, where are you attempting to throw this? Well, not in the same spot on any two pitches. <laughs> you fooled him there. You went away. He was looking in. I, I wouldn't go away right now. I might go to an off-speed pitch, or I might come hard in on it. Oh. He did that. He just elevated that fastball. He took it right on up the ladder. And Manny Ramirez just could not catch up with it. You look at the K zone, you look at the top part of that, and I think that's been the big key, Tony. The, the first two guys that got hits, he did not explore the bottom part of that line. He needs to remember. I mean, this is that adrenaline right now. He just simply can't get it down there. He's going to have to to get out of this inning eventually, though. The other thing that happens when a good hitter comes up to the plate if you watch the catcher Molina, he's not setting up until the last second. He's giving the sign, and he's sitting right in the middle of the plate because the good hitter can sense when that catcher moves. And, and Molina's giving the sign, and he's setting up right in the middle of the plate. And as soon as Bartolo Colon lifts his leg, that's where he goes to wherever he's going, in or out. To right field, long run for Vlad Guerrero. It's it's also a foul ball. Well, we told you that uh, yesterday in the fourth inning, Kevin Millar started it with a two-run home, but Manny pretty much ended it. Scott Shields came on in relief but didn't provide it. Off the rock pile out there, and that three-run homer, the Red Sox batted around. And he out there having fun in the warm California sun. Yeah, but that was three of the four unearned runs mm -hmm. that the Anaheim Angels allowed yesterday. They know they're, they're, they're not as good a team all the way around as the Boston Red Sox, so they have to play better baseball than what Boston does to win. Well, they'll play better tonight than last night. You know that shock they did. Him inside with a big strikeout for Cologne. Ramirez, the first out of the game. He just changed grips on that fastball, Tony. He had been throwing the straight four seam fastball. Here comes the sinking two seam fastball. You see Manny trying to protect there. You finally seen him kind of that adrenaline starting to get control over that. You get command of your fastball and you make the pitches you need. And that's an excellent pitch right there. To Ramirez. Even if he hits that ball, he's not going to be able to do very much with it. You saw the run, you saw the sink on that. that just an absolutely perfect pitch for Cologne to make. Well, out of the frying pan and into the fire. Manny Ramirez down. Here's David Ortiz. That'll be the first run of the series yesterday. And to strike his home plate umpire, Jerry Meals. Ryan Rungi is at first, Gary Cedarstrom at second, crew chief Ed Montague at third, Kerwin Danley on the left field line. Last night, yesterday's home plate umpire Larry Young on the right field line. That's going to be real important for Cologne tonight. As much as he throws hard, he's a guy with great command. If he can get a generous outside corner like that, he'll be a handful. Trying for the same spot. I don't think there's any question in this game. Cologne's going to have to use both halves of the plate like he did that last at bat against Ramirez. And he can't just sit there and throw fast fastballs either. He's going to have to, you know, he's going to have to mix in a slider, mix in a changeup to keep these guys off balance. Shortstop Eckstein almost directly behind second base. Inside. I honestly think that Bartolo Cologne's going to have to pitch twice as well as Pedro Martinez is tonight to win this ball game because you take a look at Anaheim they're just all banged up we saw Vladimir trying to run down the right field line we know that Garrett Anderson's not healthy 
Troy Glass cannot play third base. Boston is healthy. Ortiz with a good eye there. Colon doesn't get that call, and now it's three and one. And Mike Socha. I was really I like surprised, that. Boomer, to see the first pitch call to strike because I'll tell you why. Normally, Jerry Meals has one of the tightest strike zones in all of baseball. When he gave Bartolo Colon that first pitch, all of a sudden Bartolo thought, well, you know what, I can go back there again. Well, by going back to that very same location, he's falling behind in the count. Now, maybe a meal ticket on a 3-1 pitch for Ortiz. Yeah. One of them hit, a couple of them didn't. Well, Bartolo Colon, has he ever struggled in the first inning of a start in the playoffs against the Red Sox? Well, Yes, he has. Five years ago, 1999 pitching for Cleveland, one plus inning, seven earned runs, six hits. He was gone. Boston 23, Cleveland 7, forcing a fifth game, which then Boston won. That's a long time ago, but yet, and there's only really Veritek and Trot Nixon in the lineup that played in that game. That was Marcy Perrin, Moe, etc. But Boomer, as you well know, that was the first time in Cologne's career he ever pitched on short rest. It didn't work. Just putting it up there because it happened, and Boston now has the bases loaded for Trot Nixon. Broken bat. Certainly not going to be deep enough, I wouldn't think. To Vannon there and left. Damon bluffs. But no way. Out number two. Again, working on that outside corner. Rod Nixon just kind of got under it a little bit. And Looks like he tried to pull it a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Vannon makes the catch and makes the throw, keeping Damon at third base, though. So. Well, now Cologne's one out away from getting out of a pretty tough jam in the first inning. We got a tough hitter in Millar coming up. His power numbers the second half of the season, right around the end of June. Or Completely, almost all that power came the last three months of the year. Three months, a little bit. Two run homer yesterday in the fourth inning. Bases loaded. Two out. Top of the first. And remember, I think the guy that deserves credit for that turnaround in the second half for Kevin Millar is the young manager, Terry Francona. He had a lot of other options with David McCarty. He could have gone with Ortiz at first base, but he stuck with him, and it paid off. Like he said in our manager's meeting before the game, Millar's been in the top handful of hitters in the American League since that break. Colon ahead now, 2-0, oh, 0-2. Now, uh, this was yesterday in the fourth inning off of Jared Washburn. To left, and that started the Red Sox onslaught in that seven run fourth. Every, oh boy, oh boy, these fans, they want to make sure that this team comes back here. They're doing their darndest. I think they sense how important this game is. And we didn't really get this feel yesterday, but we got it tonight. He's starting to sense that zero up in the top of the first. Now 50,000 people punched him out. I'm telling you, Boomer, he's tight. He gave that one on the first pitch to Ortiz, and I couldn't believe it. He's not going to give you anything, and that clearly should not have been called. I think the fa Mike Sosa's facial expressions are priceless already. <laughs> well, I know one thing as a, as a coach, that's one of the reasons why you hesitate in setting up late like that, because the umpire's going to shift when you shift. And you want to really give him a good look. If you're the catcher, you want to give him a good look at whether or not he hits you dead center in the glove. Because a lot of times you hit dead center in the glove, that's going to be a ball that maybe yep. you can get. But if you're shifting late, sometimes he's shifting late, he's shifting yep. late too. Sometimes he doesn't get a good look at it. Well, this should be a good pitch here because Damon. you want to throw a strike. You don't want the runners going with two outs and three two. Damon Delhorn Ortiz on board. And now, not only are they on board, everybody moving. Already the best play in baseball coming up, and we're in the top of the first. Three and two, bases loaded, 
two outs, everybody moving at once. Now, see, you might think that, and I'm sure, you know, a, a former hitter would think that. It's in the fun spot for me. <laughs> everybody moving. I like that 0 2 pitch with two outs and nobody on. That's exciting to me. Ground ball to short. Eckstein going to go to first to Erskine, and the Angels wriggle out of it. The Red Sox leave the bases loaded, heading to the bottom of the first, charged up in Southern California. ESPN's Major League Baseball Division Series, presented by Budweiser. Budweiser, grab a cold, fresh Budweiser. It's game time. And in part by Choice Hotels. This fall, stay just two separate times and earn a free night at Choice Hotels. Red Sox had the bases full but couldn't bust through against Bartolo Colon. Now it's Anaheim's opportunity. At Mike Socha's lineup tonight, Sean Figgins leads off and plays at second base. Had a hit yesterday. Darren Erstad, three for four with a homer, hit second. Vlad Guerrero looking for his first postseason hit. It's third. Garrett Anderson, the collar yesterday, is at cleanup. Troy Gloss, his home run is still traveling, I believe, down the <laughs> down the 405. Jeff Devanin is in left field hitting six. Dallas McPherson, such told you about him. Big time minor league player with a big bat at third. Jose Molina, one year younger than his brother Benji Molina, catches tonight. David Eckstein had a hit yesterday at shortstop against the man that's won three Cy Youngs, one in Montreal and two here with Boston. Pedro Martinez, 16-9 on this season. Yeah, but with an ERA of 3.90, that is the highest in the career. Minor leagues included for Pedro Martinez. We've talked about him 0-4 in his last four starts in September. He was only in 7-6 with an ERA of 4.6 since the All-Star break. Mechanically, he's not sound. Hands away with Sean Figgins with a strike. So let's see for Pedro. Showed you in the beginning his last four starts were well abysmal by anybody's standards, but induces Figgins with a little hopper to second. Bellhorn makes it one down. Kyle Peterson working with us down on the field. Kyle, good evening. Good evening, Boomer. Yeah, we talked about the problems of Pedro Martinez, guys. The four losses he had in the month of September, the most he's had in any month over the course of his entire career. And the problem has been tied to home runs a lot this year, too, guys. Last year, Seven home runs given up over the entire season. This year, guys, 26. And Boomer, eight of those have come in the first inning. Well, thank you, Kyle. There's some guys here, Erstad, Guerrero, and Anderson, that could easily hit them. We know that. How about the way Darren Erstad comes to play in these money <laughs> games? Huh? Biggest hit for the year. Uh, the two-run double to tie Saturday's game in Oakland. Game ended up the Angels winning in Oakland and winning the pennant. Three hits yesterday, even though they were quote out of it. I mean, you can sign them up for any team we ever yeah. managed. Oh, no question. Move four. This guy he comes to play. He's a little banged up, like a lot of these starters for the California or for NLI major. See him nodding head, nodding his head there. He chased the ball out of the zone, but yesterday he was crisp. He hit the ball on on the butt. Well, no surprise. Was, uh, 25 of 69 in that magical 2002 postseason. And three for four yesterday. So, if you want clutch, we've got a guy here at the plate. Young man from North Dakota. You know, Tony, he's one of those guys that just loves these moments yeah. and these situations. Not everybody does. I mean, uh, Tony, it's got to have something to do with confidence. Yeah, and you know, you get to these situations and you get to the postseason, you're facing the best of the best a lot of the time, and you got to really believe that you can step up there and get it done. Did Kevin Millar play first base and Pedro over nicely? Boston showing some defense. I told you, Millar's looking like Don Mattingly. I can't believe it. Here's the defense tonight for Boston with Nixon in right field is the real change. Yeah, this lineup is exactly the same. As yesterday, with the exception of Nixon being in right field, we see he missed 102 games this year. Uh, but I, I expect this guy to have a good postseason. And even though he's missed a lot of games, he was a knowledgeable right fielder. He knows how know these knows these hitters, knows how to play them. And I think offensively, it wouldn't surprise me at all if he has a big postseason. That had been missed too many games. No. 
Well, Vlad Guerrero swinging through. They were teammates just at the end, Sut. Vlad coming up and Pedro finishing up in Montreal in 97. You know, and Vladimir talks a lot about how Pedro taught him to be a big leaguer. He taught him how to dress. He bought him clothes. He also returned the favor. When Pedro and the Red Sox came to town in August, Vladimir invited Pedro to his house to have his mom. Vladimir's mom cooked for both of them. I mean, it was it was a special, special day for both of them. And obviously, Pedro has had a lot to do with Vladimir and his success. I just hope that that success doesn't boil into tonight. 1-1 one, one pitch. Working away. Looks like pretty good pop thus far for Pedro Martinez. Uh, welcome to game two. If you're just tuning in, if the Red Sox and the Anaheim Angels. Boston had the bases loaded in the first inning, but could not score against Bartolo Colon. Chris Berman, Rick Sutcliffe, Tony Quinn. We're happy that you're aboard. Kyle Peterson working down on the field with us. That hit fish in there. I don't know if they serve seafood that <laughs> night. But. And that's the thing with, you know, Pedro knows, you know, Vladimir will, might chase a ball out of the zone. This one, he starts it in, runs it out. You better run it out a long ways because you, you can reach <laughs> from the it. most. Up top of the count is full to Vladimir Guerrero. See, even though Pedro might not have his best stuff or might not have thrown as well as, as, as we know him to throw, he still can get people out. He doesn't have to have his best stuff to have success. He goes with a base runner. Pedro careful with Guerrero. Guerrero waits him out for a walk. So Pedro Martinez, this is his eighth postseason start. He's actually appeared once in relief, and that was at game five of that Cleveland series. Boomer, you mentioned Don Mattingly instead of Millar. Give me a close-up of his face right now. You know what they might be doing? That might be Doug Mankiewicz in a Millar uniform. <laughs> no? Oh, you're yeah, not the going beard there. is... Uh, no, that's yeah. Millar. You're right. Yeah, Doug, you're he's right. a little thinner beard, isn't he? He's sure playing like Doug Mankiewicz out there yeah, defensively. See, that's, yeah, see, that's close. In there for a strength to Garrett Anderson. It went 0 for 4 yesterday. Garrett is such a sweet swing when everything is working. It doesn't look like he's putting any effort into it. And remember when he ran that home run derby a couple of years ago? Was that a home run? Was that a home run? Was that a home run? Right now, I think his legs are bothering him, and he's just not able to swing the bat like he'd like to swing. That's that's not even close. He's wow. starting him out with a changeup away and then fastball away. and then... Well, there's a couple of things bothering Tony, you mentioned that, that back knee. Yep. He's not able to stay on it and stay back as long as he'd like. Also, those arthritic shoulders that he has heavily medicated for just so he could get back in the lineup before he hurt the knee. Wow. Guess what? There's some pop in Pedro tonight. No score through one. It's a new season, but the dream remains. Love, Emerald Nuts. All right, back at Yankee Stadium, Gary Sheffield has a home run in this game, but he grounds out to end the 10th, so we are on to the 11th in the Bronx. We will keep you updated as it goes along. Second here, the Red Sox had the bases loaded in the first against Bartolo Colon, but Kevin Millar grounded it short, stranded three runners. Now the bottom third of the order, Veritek Cabrera Miller will take their crack at it. Veritek. Just an outstanding season for the heart and soul of this team. Getting almost 300. You can see the power numbers. The catching and heat, as we said yesterday, is such a grinder. So, I mean, the catching position is such a grinding position anyway. But, I mean, he, I don't know if he has any, any stuff left on his teeth. I just want to be grinding the teeth the way he plays. <laughs> He's a dentist's dream, I think. You know, a guy who was told to quit talking about him, though, told us yesterday was manager Terry Francona. Veritek's a free agent at the end of the year. Wow, the front office him. said, you got to quit bragging on him. You keep driving the price up. Yeah, they, they can't lose him. They, they know that. But he and the other decisions to be made will happen after all this is over. Yeah, but don't you agree? That they're going to get him taken care of and then see how much money they have Absolutely. left over yep. for the others? Absolutely. 
Theo knows that. Theo Epstein, the general manager. Terry knows that. But they're not worried about it right now. Two and two the count. Lead off man, top second. Jack fights it off. Bartolo Colon, listed at 5'11", 250. But they say he like it's Mike Sosha telling me at the cage that don't be so, looking out there on a day he doesn't pitch. He likes to shag flies, run around, field some position. Yep. Well, I mean, he looks like he just bunted and, and he won't be able to move off the mound. It's not the case at all. He's a hard worker. I, I like to get here early and watch him work here at batting practice. And he does. He shags fly balls and you know, does a lot of exercises and stuff. And, you know, being that we kind of have the same body, I know what he's gone through. You know, you just... You have to work hard. You got to work at it. Throw you know? as many innings as he does. And he does. He, he works at it. It's Veritek. Second strikeout for Cologne. One down here in the second. Talking about his body, do you think he would fit in our booth? I think us three have got it pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> we got it wired in here. But you see the run on the fastball. He needs to make a pitch. He's been able to make a pitch. So far, that ball's running away. And he'll have those shin guards on and the chest protector in about two pitches. Go back quick, on, get ready. Here's Orlando Cabrera. Oh. Teammate of Cologne's. Uh, when Bartolo pitched for half the 2002 season in Montreal, coming over in a late June trade from Cleveland. So Cologne, a teammate of Vlad Guerrero before this year, a half season in Montreal, and a teammate of this man at the plate, Orlando Cabrera, the shortstop. Doesn't it seem like a lot of these good players around the league have come from the Expo? Of course, because they can't afford it's them. It's amazing. They, as far as the scouting department went in the last 10, 12 years, pretty darn good. Really good. That's it. Well to center field to Garrett Anderson. He's there to flag it down. Two up, two down. You know, there's another one up there in Montreal that you'd love to see get an opportunity for the postseason. He won with the Expos, but that's Jose Vidro. Yeah, you? no question. Switch hitter with some power. I mean, yeah, and I've seen it here for, you know, the last 20 years, the Expos probably more so than just about any other organization because they knew players, when they got to free agency, were going to leave. They knew they had to develop their own, and that's they, mm -hmm. their – Product is all over Major League Baseball, guys. Almost every team have either started out with the Expos or had played with the Expos or something. The Twins are taking that page uh, now. Yeah, absolutely. Picked that up. Yeah. I've heard the Expos described as like a high school team where that every year you know the seniors are going to leave. Meanwhile, nothing high schoolish about Bartolo Colon this inning. Two strikes to Billy Miller. He went hitless in four trips to the plate yesterday. Told you he's tight. I told you. I'm guessing this ball is probably maybe two inches off the outside corner. And he set up early too, and he put it right where he was asking for it, and did not get the call. Now will the ump get up? So I mean, you know what this face is, but will the ump get upset with Jose Molina for doing that? He's jumping out of there like he did. I'm sure, he's got to mumble something under that mask, and probably has every right to do that. Fisted over the head of Figgins, so Miller with a base hit. That right there, Tony, is how you win a batting title. Huh? That's correct. Miller, a long line of batting titles for the Boston Red Sox, picked up one a year ago. You see him work his hands to the inside there. Just got the barrel of the bat on it, put it in play. It's a nice job of hitting right there, and you know we talked about. You know, the umpire getting upset there. You know, Soch, Mike Socha, and the catcher Molina both aren't going to say anything, but Miller was able to work his way around and score. Now you can bet mm -hmm. Mr. Mills is going to start to hear it. Here's Johnny Damon again. Started the game with a base hit, ended up stranded at third. Came into his career as hit Cologne very well. 
inching towards 400. I believe in those things. the one that Jose Molina wanted though. No. He wanted that two strike pitch to Bill Miller to end the inning. Because you gain a lot of momentum when you strike out the last guy at home, Tony. Yep. It, it's almost always where your team is able to give you the lead when you go back out. He wanted that strikeout. No. Damon fouling it off. Some his own cologne on the ball. You know that fall hit New England yesterday, boys. It's gonna be a little chilly. That hair's gonna come in handy at Fenway. <laughs> Back a sweater, Tony. Release the vest. Alrighty. Damon staying alive. See Bartolo Colo staying away from Johnny Damon, huh? Keeps having to duck his head every time Meals is throwing a ball there. They don't have this choreograph yet. He's not going to make a mistake inside. Johnny Damon knows his numbers against Cologne. Cologne knows his numbers too against Damon. So far, he hasn't been willing to make a make a pitch inside. Damon with another base hit, and Miller running with two outs. And Damon takes a big turn, goes back to first again. Damon coming through, so now that's what, four straight hits for him. In the last couple of bats yesterday, two more today, and the Red Sox in business again. Boomer, you said it yesterday when the ball game began that you thought Johnny Damon would be the key. Most people think that Ichiro Suzuki right now is the best leadoff hitter in baseball, but you have to say that Johnny Damon, even with all of the hits Ichiro got, Tony, he's had the best year. Yeah. We're, we're talking 20 home runs. We're talking over 120 runs scored. We're talking 94 RBIs leading off. Yeah. Although 262 hits isn't bad. 262 Tony, hits. What does that well, mean to you? <laughs> even a guy who won eight batting times. What does that mean to you? Uh, well, I think the number 262 is just hard to imagine. And, you know, to put it in perspective for me, you know, most guys, when they get their 200th hit, they kind of take a deep breath and say, oh, all right, I made it. He had it before we hit September 1st. So, you know, in his mindset, he was, you know, going for this record. And, uh, and he knew where that bar and he was. he knew where it was, and, and you got to tip your cap. I mean, he had a great season. He was able to do it. Mark Bellhorn up, runners on the corner. They appeal no, says uh, Ed Montague down at third. For the first time tonight, you know, Molina turned around and had a couple of words for Mr. Meals behind the plate. Again, it goes back to that bat against Miller. They thought they had him struck out. And a couple of base hits later. He's at third. And he's at third, and then the Rangers are in jeopardy of giving up a, a run that they felt like they had you know, struck out at the plate on the strike three. Well, Cologne had the bases loaded on him in the first inning with one out, but got Trot Nixon to fly to shallow left, and Millar to bounce to short. Two on, two out. He's working on Bellhorn. Bellhorn walks the line, and as we said yesterday, set the Red Sox single season record for strikeouts with 177, breaking the old mark by Butch Hobson, set in the mid 80s. You know, it starts to run that pitch camp up for Cologne. Mm -hmm. We're only in the bottom of the second inning. Sitting at 44 pitches already. Three and one, and guess who's on deck? Yeah, choose your poison right now. You 
challenge Bellhorn. I think you have to. I think you do too. You'd like to think out her half of the plate, make him use the big part of the ballpark, but you have to throw a strike here because of the man in the on deck circle. Already, I mean, we've only seen an inning and a half, an inning and two thirds, but Cologne has really had to work to get out. So Pedro's only thrown one, eight, one inning, but he made it look relatively easy. Here goes Damon, and he'll get there anyway because now the bases are loaded for Manny Ramirez. Well, these guys were teammates in Cleveland for a long time. And now a, a quick visit from uh, one of the best in the business, the pitching coach, Bud Black. Just an opportunity now to give Cologne yeah. time to catch his breath. There's really nothing you can tell him. You knew going into the game that the strike zone was going to be small. Bud Black might just make a little comment to the home plate umpire saying, hey, you know, we've seen it on video. You missed a couple of calls, which really isn't the truth. But, Tony, that's what you that's say to the guy exactly right, right now. I, I, I just love what they do now here with the glove over there, Schilling. He's, uh, yes, it's like the cone of silence. I'm not so smart. You know? It's a good, it's a good opportunity, get the opportunity to get, get the, the frustration. You don't think they love the smell of leather? Now, this is his home run in game number one with two aboard. So the Red Sox, who stranded, and well, they didn't strand any there, stranded. They stranded nine yesterday, despite the fact they got nine runs. They stranded the bases loaded in the first inning. And now here we are again with Bill Miller at third, Johnny Damon at second, Mark Bellhorn at first, and the Red Sox with a golden opportunity here. Down the right field side, going deep. Ooh. And in Maxwell smart fashion, missed it by that much. Oh, boy. A long way down that line. It looked like that ball was going to stay fair. It looked like right at the last second. Oh, to get away with throwing one there to Manny Ramirez. Oh. There it is. Missed it by a few feet. You know, I think, too, you know, the guy behind home plate yesterday was Larry Young. And, you know, when you go to the outfield, Tony, you kind of feel like you're, you know, you're going to get a night off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's like judging a pitch on the outside corner. Well, Manny is the fifth most all-time regular season grand slam in 17. We almost saw a postseason grand slam. Well, he's hit 17 postseason home runs, so he's well on his way to taking the lead in that category. And that last pitch that he hit down the line, too, I mean, it was a good pitch in. This looks like a pretty good pitch right there. Mm. Just not going to get that call, it looks like. Sosha's sat back there and he knows he knows what a strike zone's all about. There just aren't many safe zones to go to with Manny Ramirez. One one the count. Base is low. Yeah. Two. Yeah, he's been able to run that fastball or that sinker down him in on Manny Ramirez. Struck him out in the first inning. Can he get another one? Everybody on their feet. That's amazing arm strength to still be throwing in the low 90s after you've thrown 26 pressure packed pitches here at the top of the second. That's that conditioning, Tony, yep. we're talking about. Two and two.
Not a bad idea here on the part of Jose Molina. What he's doing now is he's going out to change the signs. You got a veteran team. They score a lot of runs. Sometimes they can pick up the sequence that a young catcher is using. Sometimes they can pick up location. And, you know, with Manny Ramirez at home plate, he didn't need any help. He didn't need any help. But that doesn't stop some of these guys sometimes. Oh, oh, oh. Passing He'll take in, it. Passing that information on if they can. He's so good. That's the exact same pitch that he struck out on in his first at bat. Yep. Take a look at it, Tony. It's that two seam fastball down and in. He chased it early and he makes that adjustment. And now, for the second time tonight, sorry, Chuck, the most exciting play in baseball. Three and two, two out, bases loaded, everybody moving. They will move home 90 feet. Ball four, second walk in a row, plates Bill Miller, 1-0 Red Sox. And Mike Socha is, he could fry an egg, I think, on top of his head right now. They're pretty upset right now. Starts out innocently enough. Now, that was a ball that Manny did a great job of almost you know hitting what? out of here. But Cologne's, Cologne's not missing by much here, Rick. Well, you look at that two-seam fastball. There's a little cut fastball. Now he comes back down and in. And the, the, just the, the discipline that Manny Ramirez showed there. And then on that pitch, Tony, you can see it in the K zone almost until the last moment. But somehow, Manny Ramirez could see that. And now the dangerous David Ortiz is up. Ortiz with 41 home runs. Second only to Ramirez is 43 in the American League. I'll tell you what, I think Jose Molina running off with what he thought was strike three on Miller. I mean, he has really tightened that zone up, even tighter than it normally is for Jerry Beals at home plate. I'm going to tell you, sir, a conversation I had with the manager, and I'm not going to say which one. It was just that we were just talking, one of the Angels coaches. But Jerry Beals goes, uh oh, that's not, he goes, that's probably not the right ump for Bartolo Colon. I'm going to say which one said it, but certainly an hour later, that's proven thus far to be true. There's a lot. He's had a to his total right yeah. now, and he's only gotten five outs. There's a snap throw. Critical mistake by the Red Sox and a heads-up play by Molina. That's one way to get out of a bases-loaded situation with only one run scored. Don't you go away. ESPN College Game Day shoots live from Los Angeles, where number one ranked USC hosts fellow unbeaten and Pac-10 rival California. That's one of the Pac-10's most anticipated games in a decade. College Game Day, Saturday at 10.30 on ESPN. Jeans make all the difference. Introducing Genworth Financial, built on GE Heritage, now creating our own legacy. Assurance in rain means Goodyear's deeply carved aqua shoots propel water away from your tread. Assurance on ice means Goodyear's interlocking treads deliver gripping power. Assurance on dry pavement means Goodyear's reinforced shoulders give you confident maneuvering. The revolutionary new Goodyear Assurance with triple tread technology for assurance in any weather on the wings of Goodyear. Dad! Dad! What should we do? I will come for you. Do you understand me?
after tomorrow. Own the DVD October 12th. Now it'll be fine. It's funny how you make decisions. Some decisions are easy. And some need a little help. So where do you turn for help when it comes to choosing your insurance agent? How do you decide who's going to help protect everything that's important? Wow, the excitement here in Anaheim. These first couple innings, you can cut it with a knife. Meanwhile, Troy Gloss steps to the plate. Perfect at the plate yesterday is DH, three for three. His home run, still traveling. Hit the back one, went over both bullpens in left field. He said, though, you know, it only counts for one. <laughs> Pedro Martinez, a deficient first inning, and you know what the crowd's thinking now. Now he's getting the calls. Where is it for Bartolo Colon? Any truth to it? No, those were both yeah. strikes. Pedro knows what he's dealing with behind the whole plate. I mean, it's as small as a strike zone can get. So he's going to change speeds, he's going to add late movement, yep. and he's going to stay in that small box. Because he knows, Tony, he's going to have some runs to work yep. with. I, I totally agree with you. No, no sense pulling balls way out of his zone. He's going to start them in, run it out, just like that last pitch. He's not going to, not going to be up in the zone, way out of the zone. He's going to try to keep it in the zone and give these angel hitters something that they think they can swing at and put in play, and he's going to let his defense work with, work for it. Count full to Gloss. Step out for a minute. Yep. Jose Molina, and that did... Caught Bellhorn napping, although there's more to it, and after this batter, we'll show you. Gloss got the base on balls. You know, part of that play, Sutton, I'll let you take over. The shift on Ortiz has Eckstein right behind second base. Take a look at the sign, though. I mean, Eckstein was there, and you could see Molina. They had some communication. I mean, there was a sign that was passed along from the catcher to the shortstop. You see Eckstein getting right in line there. You saw Bellhorn fall down. No excuse whatsoever for what happened to Bellhorn, but credit has to go to Molina for putting that sign on. One of the few not happy yep. in the crowd, the Red Sox general manager, Theo Epstein. Jeff Devanin hits this into Falcon. I got a nice story about Devanin. You're going to love this, Tony, because I know how close you were with the late Ted Williams. He told me before the game yesterday that, you know, he has the oldest Ted Williams autograph. I said, now, how do, you, how do you know that? You're a young man. He says, well, I grew up in San Diego. So did my grandfather. Grew up in the same neighborhood as Ted Williams. They were all high school chumps, boyhood chumps. And the deal was, as Pedro worked from the stretch, The deal was they all, the four or five guys, all signed baseballs. And they all gave it to each other just in case any one of them got famous. They were 16 years old. So he has a Ted Williams signed baseball that his grandfather gave to his dad, gave to him. The Ted signed a PCL baseball <laughs> when Ted was 16 years old just in case any of those guys got famous. Wow. He goes, boy, I, I got it in a very safe place. It's a great story. However, he swung through that one. That baseball, not a PCL no. ball. It's one of two. I was going to say that baseball not going to help him any time to get off <laughs> Pedro Martinez. When he gets a young hitter at home plate, I mean, he, he becomes like a surgeon, man. He just, there's so many weapons that he has and ways to go about getting them out, don't he? Yeah, with, this, with this angel lineup, you expect him. Devannon, inside out like a good lefty hitter will do. Maybe the ball does pay some dividend. All of a sudden, Anaheim in business with two on and none out. Again, let's look back at this play one more time from Bellhorn's angle. That got the uh, Angels out of a pickle. Well, he slips a little bit, Tony. You can see him out here taking that secondary lead. But all of a sudden, when Molina comes up so quick, you can see Eckstein blocking the path. I mean, I just give a lot of credit to Mike Sosha for having that play. Yeah. I mean, they knew Cologne was struggling. They were looking for a way to get him out of it. And that's almost like Molina hitting a grand slam homer uh, himself. You're right. And 
you know, the pitch to Ortiz was a ball, too. So, you know, Molina comes up and really gets them out of a jam, gets Cologne back on the bench where hopefully he can regroup. Young Dallas McPherson swings through that, 24 years of age. Uh, only played a handful of games, 16 games with the Angels this year, but in the minors, split evenly with Double A Arkansas. That they put it at the Travelers, and the Salt Lake City Buzz combined 40 homers, 126 RBIs, 317 in 135 games, 36 doubles, 14 triples. Minor League Player of the Year, according to Sporting. But again, Pedro Martinez didn't pitch. In double-A AA or triple-A this year. With just 40 at-bats at the big league level, Tony, there's already a report on it yep. that he can't hit the off-speed stuff. He's a great fastball hitter, but there's two change-ups that he was way out in front of. I mean, you can go up and out of the zone with a fastball or go right back to something soft again. And to think about it, he hadn't seen a change-up like this in the minor league, no matter what level he's played at. Pretty good bet. He's going to see something, something off speed here. If Pedro decides to go for it, and that's the thing. Pedro, they talked about his side session. How it was so much better. Well, the reason why his rotation was better, which means he's getting the feel for that changeup back. Fouled away. It's just a little showpiece yes, there. Yes. <laughs> that was for show. Well, we've had all sorts of excitement thus far here with the Red Sox getting a run on a bases loaded walk, but having an opportunity with the bases loaded in each inning. But only getting that one run. Chris Berman, Rick Sutcliffe, Tony Gwynn with you here, and Kyle Peterson. Game two of this ALDS. Won yesterday by the Red Sox, the lid lifter 9 3. Angels in business with two on and none out against Pedro Martinez. You know, the difference that I've seen in Pedro right now, Boomer and Tony, I see the same arm angle. I see the same arm speed. I see the same pull with that left arm, which is where he generates a lot of his power. But I don't see that drive. I don't see him pushing off with that right foot like he has in the past. He's, he, he's pretty much just coming right at the hitter and, and in a set position. I mean, he used to just attack that zone coming off that mound. Couple of pitches up there in the speed in the first inning, but that's not so much here, Sut. Watch his back foot. See how it's kind of angled in there so that he's got some drive. But that thing normally used to just to explode off the bugger. Tony is just kind of dragging right now. He reached back on that pitch right yeah. there. That was 95 miles an hour. But he's not consistently doing that with that back foot. Going the other way and coming on is Manny Ramirez. He won't get it. Here comes Gloss lumbering to the plate. Tied and one. So the unknown angels, Jeff Devannon, Dallas McPherson, coming through against Pedro. And we have a tie ball game. I don't know where McPherson's going to play next year. If they re-sign Troy Gloss, he'll be the third baseman. But, Tony, this kid is going to play in the big leagues. That's quite an adjustment there to get that team done. Absolutely. And as you saw, it was off the plate. And he didn't try to do too much with it. He just put it in play. How about the Angels? Almost like a good football team after a turnover going for the absolutely. jugular. You I mean, know, Bellhorn mishap, and now here they are. That's absolutely right. You get out of that last jam where it looked like Cologne was starting to struggle, and you get a great pickoff to get you out of it, and then you turn right around and tie the ball game. Here's the guy that made the pickoff for Jose Molina, charging in at the corners to punt to Pedro. Over to third base. And they get the force. They wanted too far, and Pedro fielded beautifully. There's one out. Matt Weiner is in the studio. Matt? Hi, Boomer. Torrey Hunter was the hero last night defensively for the Twins in game one. In the 12th, Tanyan Sturz trying to get his team to the bottom half, but he gave up the goods against Hunter with for the solo shot. 6-5. Still one out left in the top half. Made the catch. Thank you, Matt. They made the catch last night. Made the throw last night. Made made the Yankee fans a little nervous. Yeah, <laughs> bite their nails. Wow. So here's David Eckstein. 
still runners at first and second. I'm have a thought on that when we get back to here. Boy, we did the Twins last week, and, you know, question at Santana, did he pitch enough? They should have won a game. Maybe Ron Gardenhire, dumb like a fox. Tell you what, I got Santana and Radke. I feel pretty good with them anywhere. Maybe three, four would have my other pitchers. I'd rather have them at home. Maybe the way it's worked out thus far, we'll see. Outfielder shallow it up a little bit. Very rare when Eckstein really drives the ball. Well, it's a good thing we wow. made that throw because that was a poor bunt attempt trying to get the runners in the scoring position. Sosha and our manager's meeting talked about the Bannon not yep. getting the guy over in yesterday's game. He thought that could have been big to have gotten something on the board to tie the game up. They didn't get it done. They didn't execute in that last situation. Yep. And that's really one of the things this team is known for. Is, and they have to do Yeah, because they have to. And that's that's exactly right. In order for them to have success, they've got to be able to execute those situations. Well, what you're saying, guys, both as four in American League team, this is a National League team. Does Absolutely. that make sense? Yeah. We're just out, man. Particularly once Troy Glass hits, because when you get to that point, you've got inexperience, right? And you've got lack of power. Yeah. And you got guys that that weren't here two years ago being asked to do stuff that that team was able to do. Next time drives it pretty well to center. There's Johnny Damon. The sack fly that drives in a run. Yep. You get the sack bunt down. Yep. But everybody's standing where they are. McPherson and second. Lean at first, and now there's two down. Well, the whole big thing in Pedro Martinez's night thus far was the battle with Troy Glass. You see the easy first inning. He walked Vladimir Guerrero on a 3-2 pitch, but he walked Glass on a 3-2 pitch. That was a different story. Vladimir was with two outs and nobody on. Troy Glass started the inning with a walk. Tony, those, those almost always score, yeah, don't man. they? The old side that used to have his Cincinnati walks will always hunt. We'll come back to hunt. No question. That's what that's been a reminder of my whole career. First and second, Molina at first. Sean Figgins rounded a second to start the game. That's wide of the first base coach. One of our favorites from years past. Slick fielding shortstop, second base. Shortstop really. Fettuccini Alfredo Griffin, first base coach for the Angels. Yeah, good hands, huh? He was all teeth when you called him that before the game. <laughs> hey, with he, he, with he does. <laughs> From the old days. Right, Ricky had a huge smile <laughs> on his face. <laughs> There's no question who was calling him. Good pitch there, Pedro. Well, it was a good pitch. The fans aren't real happy with it. They think it was a lot like the one that was not called for Cologne. You take a look at it there, and it just gets a piece of it. And a nice job by Veritek to hold it there, not take it out of the zone, and then try to bring it back. The Red Sox trying to get behind the base runner, a la Anaheim. Appeal? No. And Montague's waved a couple of them off already. We're going to geometry class now with this thing, huh? What is that, a trapezoid? It's a nightmare for me trying to figure that out. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> That's the imaginary zone. Oh, I know what it is. <laughs> We've got battles going on tonight. Pedro trying to get out of this inning. Black execution by Anaheim. Second, first, and second. Nobody out. Couldn't get the punt down. You got the runner forced it. At third, now they now they need a two-out hit. They had a little bit of everything the first two innings. High cheese and Figgins waves two stranded. But the Angels do ring the bell once after they pick off Bellhorn and they even the series at one. You isn't that Harold? Mm-hmm. Daytime calls are just too expensive, so he went nocturnal. Yes, yes, it is very late. Get another wireless plan, Harold! Daytime.
daytime calls costing you a fortune? Come to T-Mobile and talk whenever nationwide. Daytime. T-Mobile gives you the most whenever minutes. 1,000 for just $39.99. T-Mobile. Get more. According to the LA Times, Indian casinos have spent $170 million on political contributions. Why? Because they like having an $8 billion monopoly that pays no tax. And they know in Sacramento, nothing speaks louder than cold, hard cash. If the politicians can't get Indian gaming under control, maybe we should. Yes, in 68, you pay your fair share. Why don't they? Hours of battery life. Introducing the new Sony Network Walkman like no other. Un día bueno, todo se ve relativamente fácil. Que estás en comando de todo lo que está pasando en el terreno. Hoy es un día donde tú sabes que la victoria la puedes sentir. Pero esos son los días donde las cosas especiales pasan. For this. October, 8 teams, one champion. Watch the World Series. Don't miss it. ESPN's Major League Baseball Division Series, presented by Budweiser. Brought to you by Sony and the new network Walkman player. Sony, like no other. And Mercury and your local Lincoln Mercury dealers. Well, I haven't dialed that number recently. 1-800-THE-BABE. You know, usually that's reserved just to New York, right? 1918 signs all over the place in Boston Place. It's amazing now if it's going to come out here 3,000 miles and they're going to start showing Babe Ruth pictures here in Anaheim. But it is the postseason, and anything goes. David Ortiz was at the plate when Mark Bellhorn was picked off second base. So now he's up again, but bad news for him in Boston, there's nobody on. We begin the third, a 1-1 game. Chris Berman, Rick Sutcliffe, Tony Gwynn, Kyle Peterson, and our ESPN crew. Ortiz sends this one a mile high. Garrett Anderson in center field at the track. Calls it in. You know, that one brought the fog in, I think. You mentioned, you mentioned that nobody was on, but when a guy hits 41 home runs, I feel like there's a man in scoring position. Right. <laughs> hey, in a day game, well, here's the pitch. A day game is this, trend, that's hard to say. Is it out of here? Yeah. No, I would say yes, it's out of here. Okay. Yeah, I don't really. think there's any question. I think there's at least 15 to 20 feet of carry. Yeah. This kind of haze hanging over the ballpark right now. Well, the ball's not going to carry nearly as good. This ball hit well by Trot Nixon, or so we thought, but since it's the other way, not as far, and Devan is there. I make two observations about night first day game here in Anaheim. First of all, now, of course, Boston had a seven-run fourth, but ball carries unbelievably in the day, and the sun's out. I don't, it, it's just the crowd, but the sun went down, and the decibel level went up about 30. Yeah. But just less balls are going to go out of the park. Huh? Yep. That's our, that's our weather, our meteorology, meteorologic report for the evening. Some of the, uh, the volcanic ashes from Mount <laughs> St. Helens sifting their way down the coast here. I can't believe that's spouting again. Oh, no. well, Cologne would like to sift his way yep. through an easier inning than what he's had in the first two. Yes, he would. He's two thirds there. He, he keeps pounding that fastball in there and not getting any cooperation from Mr. Meals behind the plate. Well, I think Cologne has to adjust. I think you're right. I mean, you can throw something with late movement, but you, you need to quit being too fine. Rip, but foul. Cologne is no stranger to the postseason. This is his seventh postseason start. Three of his six previous, well, now four of his seven have been against Boston. Oddly enough, one of them in 1998. His Cleveland Indians beat the Red Sox in four games. 
1999. He had two of them, one which we showed you. In that series, Boston came from behind and mashed them and made him three games in two. So that's a while ago. And, and again, I wonder what you draw on. If you haven't been in postseason for a while, your pitcher, is there something you can draw on even five years later, even if you're a, a, a different pitcher, a different player? Oh, yeah. yeah, you broke the ice. Yeah, you, you know what it's like, and, and, and you're even thirstier to get back there and try to improve on the success that you've already had. I mean, he was two and two in the postseason with a good ERA. You know, he just pitched one time on less than normal rest, and, and it was a mistake on the part of the front office. But this means even more to Cologne than any other postseason start because of who he's pitching against. I mean, him and Pedro Martinez are as close as they come. I mean, they call each other compadres. You go to Cologne's house, his trophy room, the picture right in the middle is Cologne and Pedro. Doesn't mean a whole lot right now. Not right now. They no. want to beat each other. That's exactly right. Talk about uh, you know, Guerrero inviting these guys to their house to eat and stuff. Yep. You, know, you see them here shaking That's hands. Nice. Very nice. Early before the game. Wishing obviously. each other luck. And then can't talk. But believe me, when they cross those white lines out there, it's business. Now both, the count is full. I'm sorry. Guys. Both guys want to win. There's no question. Both guys have won an awful lot in their career. 31, 32 years of age. You have to figure there's more to come. Oh, you yeah. just don't know where it's going to come for Pedro. Free agent. The loan's not going anywhere. Ripped the right of next time. And so a 1-2-3 inning for Bartolo Colon. 1-1 one, one to the bottom of the third. That restaurant was great. Yeah, it's one of my favorites. Is that where you take all your first dates? Maybe. Oh! That girl almost hit me. Women drivers. Introducing the highly maneuverable Mercury Mariner. You have been a great audience, but I'm going to ask you to stay away from the chicken selects or I will have you forcibly removed from the stadium. You play a mean bass, but if I see you even look at these chicken selects again, you're out of the band. I want to play one last number for you. It's called My Girlfriend Jenny Left Me Because I Wouldn't Give Her Any Chicken Selects and Now She's Real Mad But I'm Real Happy Because I Still Have Them. These babies are new. And they're mine. Yummy. If you can smell the chicken, you're too close. There's a power so awesome, so irresistible, you'll do anything to get your hands on it. Introducing Gillette M3 Power. Turn on the first battery-powered shaving system from Gillette and turn on the amazing new Power Glide blades. Micro pulses raise the hair, so you shave closer in one power stroke. Feel the power of the world's best shave. For maximum power, change the battery every six months. New M3 Power from Gillette. Enterprise, run a car for our trip? Yeah, they're everywhere. Even airports. See? Airports, too. Hello, welcome to Enterprise. Let me help you with that. Wow. The friendly service of Enterprise is everywhere. Pick Enterprise. We'll pick you up. He went to his doctor and asked about Cialis. And that's exactly what she had in mind. Ask your doctor if Cialis is right for you. Cialis, are you ready? Cold hard fact. Other beers are heat pasteurized at 140 degrees. Coors Light is always frost brewed at an icy 34. Why? Because we know you love cold beer. Coors Light, our goal, the coldest tasting beer in the world. Those Thundersticks working hard early tonight. A hard day's night for these Thundersticks as the Angels and Red Sox are 1-1. Bottom of the third inning. As Pedro Martinez. Now let's watch Cologne have his first 1-2-3 inning. Pedro's not yet had one. Faces the meat of the Anaheim order. Darren Erstad, Vladimir Guerrero, Garrett Anderson, 2 3 4. They talk about Tony Erstad never swinging at that first pitch. What do you think your percentage was swinging at the first pitch over your career? Uh, early in my career, I would say 80%, 85%. I didn't swing at the first one, but 
you got the no pitchers and you got a little more experience, I would say that changed probably about 60%. First stat the other way, right at Manny Ramirez. And first stat. First stat said that he spent 500 in bats setting up that game tying double that he hit off of Oakland on Saturday. He hadn't swung at the first pitch all year long, and he did on that at bat, driving in two runs to tie it up, and then, of course, Garrett Anderson with that seeing eye single, which was the biggest RBI that clinched the American League West for him. Vladimir Guerrero walked in the first inning, still looking for his first hit all season. For five yesterday. Should come soon, although Andrew Martinez doesn't feel that way. It's a good looking helmet, huh? Oh, ball was the. Get some hair on it yeah. on the right field line. Both ways. Pedro throwing it up there to the plate. Look at that. Now, if you put your hand on that to kind of adjust it on your head, that's like Lester Hayes stick him, isn't it? <laughs> that's getting a nice grip for your bat. So he doesn't wear batting gloves. It's this ball well to center. Johnny Damon going back to the track. But tracks it down to the deepest part of the park. And it goes as a long out. Getting close. Just missed that too. I mean, he put as good a good a swing on this as you can. Starts it in the zone, runs it out. He catches it right off the end of the bat. But that's not bad. Just a little bit out in front of that. You know, Mike Sosa saying before the game that he thought Vlad just missed hitting three home runs in the ball game yesterday. So he's getting close. Meanwhile, two out, nobody on. Garrett Anderson looks at ball one. Pedro Martinez regular season record 182 and 76. The uh, any pitcher in the history of the majors with 200 decisions. He has the best percentage 705. That's you know the history of him. I just wondered what you were going to get tonight after a rough month for him. Last pitch was a changeup. You know, Garrett Anderson started and had to stop because the ball just hadn't gotten there yet. Breaking ball, hit to Bellhorn. And just as Cologne had a 1 2 3 inning, his last half, Pedro Martinez, very calm, cool, collected. All right, men, chemistry! Four elements that you've got. <laughs> with you guys. Let's get serious. <laughs> Sunday NFL Countdown. The hardest working pregame show in football. Sundays at 11 on ESPN. Hampton has this great complimentary hot breakfast with a rotating menu. Lots of delicious stuff like sausage, muffins, Danish, biscuits, egg patties, French toast sticks, and more. Huh. Caution. Hot. <laughs> mm -hmm. They even have a complimentary on-the-go breakfast bag. It is complimentary, right? Yes. I can just take it? Yes. Game on. 1-1. One, one. Sox, Angels. Top of the fourth. Martinez, Cologne. One, two, three inning in the third. Cologne starts Jason Veritek up with the strike. Veritek, Cabrera, Miller. Now, I did say it felt 6-5, six, 7-6 seven, six in the opening. We're only in the fourth inning. It certainly could have been a yep. lot of runs thus far, right? No question. Veritek fouls it back, so Cologne is ahead. Look at the year that Cologne's had. Boomer 18-12. and 6-0, and oh, though, this year against the Texas Rangers. You want to know why they fell out of the race there the last week or so of the season? And I think the reason for that is because even though Texas is talented offensively, Tony, they're younger. Yeah. I mean, they're more aggressive. They're going to swing at more pitches that are that are close to the zone, but yet just out of the zone. A little bit more experience and discipline. Don't you agree with Boston? I, I do. I think, uh, you know, this Boston lineup is a very experienced lineup, and it's you know, a lot like the Angel lineup at the bottom half. The, the top guys, guys at the top of the lineup are experienced guys. You know, guys at the bottom half 
or the inexperienced guys, but already tonight you saw McPherson knock in the Angels' only run, too. I think Texas is every bit as talented. They just don't have the experience, yeah. particularly in the postseason. They may get it for long. Cajon. Trying to finish off Ferentek. Strike out to begin the fourth. His third of the game. And now Orlando Cabrera is coming up. Cologne, 18 wins as such told you this year. It won 18 before as a member of the Cleveland Indians in 99. And in 2002 as a 20 game winner, although he did it with two different clubs. Cleveland and Montreal. I actually thought I'd see Rick Sutcliffe's name on this list when I look. Only the second ever to win 10 or more games with two teams in two different leagues in the same season. But I guess Cleveland traded you to the Cubs too early at 84. The other guy wasn't Sutt. It was Hank Barowi of the in 1945 with the Yankees and the Cubs. Now give me credit. I was thinking of you. And you went back a ways there. I'll tell you one thing too. You talk about consistency. The starting pitchers obviously you start with Greg Maddox. But he and Cologne are the only two pitchers in baseball with 14 or more wins the last seven straight years. I mean, that's getting it done, and that's why you long term a guy like this. That'll be fun. Cologne had to come on like gangbusters the second half. Yes, he did. To get 14. Averaging 16 wins along with 216 innings over his seven full major league seasons. Canada's one and two to Orlando Cabrera. And we'd like to welcome those of you that have watched the Yankees come from behind to score two in the 12th. And it's just excitement supreme at Yankee Stadium as they beat the Twins seven to six. Literally, Jeter, A Rod involved, A Rod tying it with the double, and Matsui with the sack for the Twins had him on the ropes. Really, Torrey Hunter did, but so that series now one one going to the Twin Cities. We are one one here in the top of the fourth. Red Sox had the bases loaded both in the first and the second innings. To get only one run and that on a, on a walk. And then the Angels coming back with a run on their own. A single by young Dallas McPherson. Tie the game at the bottom of the second. Boom and Pedro Martinez. Ball hit well to right. Flag Guerrero has enough time to flag it down against his ex mate in Montreal, Orlando Cabrera. And those just watching now. Cologne got out of the first inning by getting Kevin Millar to ground his short. Actually, the bases loaded with one out got Trot Nixon to fly to the outfield before that. And then Jose Molina caught Mark Bellhorn napping. Eckstein was there, and that's how they got out of bases loaded in the second inning after one run. The RBI, if you're keeping score at home, the Ramirez with the walk. Billy Miller is up. He's just tuning in from the New York game. And this has been a loud place as the fans know that the Angels cannot afford to wing east to Boston down 0-2. They can win it. They got a great road record. As a matter of fact, certainly the last month or two, the best in baseball, but Fenway is Fenway. It's going to be tough. It'll be a different see a red in Boston Friday afternoon, and we'll have that game for you here on ESPN at 4 Eastern time Friday. Miller, that'll go foul. I think the at for Miller was probably the difference in the game, Tony. You know, we've seen a lot of great at bats, but he had to count 0 and 2. He laid off a pitch just away, and then he fought off a fastball in. It seemed like nothing, a two out yep. base hit, but it eventually led to the bases loaded and that walk by yep. Manny Ramirez for the run. And he was down the count 0 2, and Cologne went for the kill on a fastball. On the outside corner that they thought was a strike that was called the ball he ends up getting the base hit then the corner low run. 
even though we're only in the top of the fourth inning, we've had a lot of action <laughs> we in have. the first three and a, a half lot of inches. inches. Not a lot of runs, but a lot of action. A lot of a lot of stuff that you sit on the edge of your seat. I think the more it goes, the more advantage Mike Sosha's team gets because he wanted this series to come down to a battle of the bullpen. Yeah. This game could be heading that way. That'll be out of play. Now we just had the feel that they, now they still may be. I mean, the, the old song was in the right place at the wrong time. I and mean, we certainly could have had a lot of runs thus far. We predicted at the beginning we still could. Six, five, seven, six, although certainly Pedro looks pretty good. Pedro, yeah. that's the story thus far tonight. Pedro Martinez, Sutton, Tony, has looked. Well, certainly better than he had in September. That's the understatement of the year. Next time, it's short. First down at first. Miller is gone, and the second straight one, two, three inning for Bartolo Colon. One, one. Oh, no. Get the tarp out. It's, we're only kidding. It's Southern California. It doesn't rain. It's just the cascading opportunities here for both the Red Sox and the Angels. We are 1-1 in the bottom of the fourth in Troy Gloss, who is um, yet to be retired in this series. Three for three with a homer and two doubles yesterday. Walked and scored. We went off the second inning here with a walk and then scored the run. Single by young Dallas McPherson. Troy Gloss, who Telling us yesterday as he swings through that whirly bird by Pedro that only he thought he could make it back this year. The Angels really weren't counting on him. He was the only and, one, yeah. Yep. Saying, I, I knew it. I didn't say anything because I didn't want to jinx it, but I, I was real confident. But, you know, he's such a nice fielding third oh. baseman. But, hey, have his bat in the lineup. As we said, he hadn't been retired yet. And if you missed that home run yesterday, you know, if that ball whizzing past your window in Southern California, that could be his. Major shoulder surgery only in May. And for him to come back and be this productive. And he said as soon as the season ends, he's going to start building that shoulder up to throw. But right now he just can't take a chance on hurting it, not being able to swing it. Here's a whirly bird by Pedro. Gloss will sit down. We mentioned injury to try Gloss. Adam Kennedy, the normal second baseman. But he's not there. He's with our Kyle Peterson. No, he's not. Adam torn MCL, torn ACL a couple weeks ago. First and foremost, how are you feeling right now? Um, okay and not okay, you know. Uh, just wish I could be out there with the team. Um, but I'm here to root him on, and uh, it's been, been a fun time watching him play. They've been playing well. Such a big part of this team, obviously, not only this year, but during the run of the world title a couple years ago. How hard is it to sit and, and know that you can't be a part of it on the field right now? Uh, it's tough, you know, it's tough to come to the field and um, know that they're going to be out there giving it everything and, uh, you know, you can't do the same. So uh, just try to get back, um, rehab my knee, and then see where we can go from here. Bartolo works out of a couple jams early now, 1-1 one, one tie. What do you think of the way this game's going so far? Uh, it's fun to watch, you know. You know these two pitchers throwing, it's going to be a great game, and um, every run matters. So uh, <laughs> look forward to a good game from here on out. Adam, thanks for joining us. Get healthy. We'll see you next year. Okay, thanks. Boomer. Kyle, thank you. Uh, again, another one of the, the missing for the Angels. Well, they gave up a lot when they traded for Kennedy. I mean, Jim Edmonds was part of that deal with St. Louis, but they also lost a lot, not only offensively, but defensively. Mike Sosha talking about how he made all of the plays, and Mike Sosha didn't think anybody turned to double play better than their second baseman, Adam Kennedy. So also in the process of all these injuries, you find a guy like Sean Figgins, too. Jeff Devannon, at Ted Williams' ball coming through, and there's a base hit, his second of the night. The injury to Adam Kennedy happened on the 17th of September, and it ball hit by Ichiro. And there it was. There's the knee. It just buckled, and it's a W just plant, and there it was. Now, look, this is the projected lineup, which had one game together this year with you see Gloss at third base and Guillen, of course, suspended the last week of the regular season in the playoffs. Tim Sockeye Salmon gone for the year at DH. Kennedy at second base. I mean, those are some major names out of the lineup for Anaheim. But yet, the Angels came from behind to win the West behind Mike Sosha. And some major success and experience 
this time of the year yeah. with Salmon and Kennedy too. Yeah. You're right, Boomer. But that lineup, that was the lineup that won the championship for. Here's Timmy Salmon who threw out the first pitch on crutches yesterday. Jim Abbott threw out the first pitch tonight. That, that was great, great to see. Oh, wasn't that it? Was Yeah, there it is yesterday, Tim Salmon, really an angel that dates back to 95 when they almost won the West, and really, so does Garrett Anderson, but he was kind of become Mr. Angel. And it was Garrett Anderson and Darren Erstad that were out there with him mm -hmm. as he threw that pitch. Salmon rehabbing in Phoenix did not get the game that Anaheim won the division on on Saturday. He said it was excruciating. He's trying to get reports over the computer and he said, I just didn't know. And then they go in and came from behind and he's going to be with them all these games. Time and part of this club. Time to run, Tony? Get close to that I time? think so. I mean, you got a guy who swings and misses a lot. That's probably why they have it. But Good speed at first base in the van and 18 stolen bases on the year only caught three times well, what a, I mean what a good player this guy has become like you said through some of these injuries yep. I mean some of these guys have gotten an opportunity and, and some of the guys that helped out early in the year you know aren't on the playoff roster but guys like the Vannon Figgins and Amezaga, Amezaga. here he goes swung on and missed throw Veritek double play boy did he snap that throw off in a hurry Devannon pegged out. McPherson struck out. Angels are out. 20th Century Fox is the day after tomorrow brings us the conclusion of game two between the Twins and Yankees. An A-Rod double tied it up with the bases loaded. Hideki Matsui's line drive serves as a sack fly. Derek Jeter slides in safely. Series tied at one. What an exciting finish in the Bronx. Wow. Meanwhile, we're a little lower scoring than we predicted so far, but boy, it's 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 going to be nail biting time. Johnny Damon slapping it. McPherson from his knees gets him by a half a step. Damon retired for the first time tonight. Again, he hit that ball right on the screws. That's the first time they've gotten him out yep. since Jarrett Washburn came out of the ball game in Game One. I was talking with Troy Gloss about wow. McPherson, and I said, what do you think? He said he's an everyday player. He's a power impact type guy offensively, and he will get better defensively. Well, he just got better in a hurry. Yeah, that's the old keep the puck in front yeah, of you. Exactly. Right? <laughs> that's, that's what he did. He kept it in yeah. front. Got it with the blocker, and then uh, threw it over nicely. Looked like he didn't use that glove for catching it. He just you know. got it. With the waffle they used, right? He got it done. Mark Bellhorn single walk, but was the one picked off second base by Jose Molina. He ended the bases loaded threat by the Red Sox in the second. Bases loaded in the first didn't score at all. Bases loaded in the second got just one run on a walk to Manny Ramirez. Hammered, but there's Erstad. He's not fooling anybody. Nope. Uh, he doesn't get picked off second. We don't know how big an inning the Red yep. Sox might have had. I don't know that he could have gotten Ortiz out because uh -huh. he was really picking on him. I mean, you're right. He would have thrown more pitches, and he probably wouldn't be in the ball game yeah. right now. He has lowered his sights, which means even though they're hitting it hard, they're not hitting it as high as they were earlier on, and he's given his infield a chance. We talked about how brilliantly Erstad has become a, a player at first base. Those Willie Mays type over-the-shoulder catches that he made yesterday, two or three of them. Talking to him before the game, you know, you enjoying this first base? You're in every play, you know, you're in. He says, What do you think? I said, Well, what I think is that, he said, well, then you're right. I said, I played center field all my life. That's what I'd rather play. But you know, if you're asking me, adjusted pretty quickly. Yeah, I, I mean, you should watch his pregame workout. I mean, I like to watch him. Takes his ground balls, he goes to his left, he goes to his right. At the end, they hit him some pop ups down the line like that. You know, he covers a lot of ground. Just I mean, he comes player. off the field after infield and batting practice looking like he just ran a marathon. Yeah. I mean, that's just, that's how he prepares. Yeah, and he's not the only one either. I mean, Eckstein and Figgins both 
put in a, a good day's work before every game. That gets a strike call for Cologne against Manny Ramirez. He's up one and two. So Manny tonight is struck out and walked with the bases loaded. Cologne trying for, although they've hit the ball hard on him, his third one, two, three inning. Collective groan. Low. Two and two. Two outs. Base is clear. Nibble, nibble, nibble. But a good eye. And... Everybody knows the score with the strike zone by now, don't they, fellas? He's been trying to get it all night. And it's not going to change. You've got to give credit. He has been consistent back then. Kendra Molina's got to help him a little bit. Set up a war on the plate. Sharply hit to Figgins, but over to Erstad. Cologne settling in. Retired nine in a row. 1-1 one, one here in Anaheim. Well, you saw that close look. It is a white knuckler here in the bottom of the fifth inning, settling into the 1-1 one, one pitcher's duel. They begin that way with Pedro Martinez and specifically Bartolo Colon, but it is now as Jose Molina swings and misses. Sixty six pitches for Pedro as we reach the bottom of the fifth inning. Obviously everybody everybody in Boston counts his pitches. That's for sure. Terry Francona found that out. Whoa, a little mix up and it's gonna cost the Red Sox. Oh my goodness, a can of proverbial corn. And neither Cabrera nor Ramirez could get their signal straight, so a second mental miscue by Boston could put him behind the eight ball. Yeah, this ball goes up in the air, and Cabrera's going after the ball hard, but you see Ramirez isn't even in the picture. Cabrera felt like he couldn't catch it, and Ramirez is not even there. Ramirez is thinking Cabrera's going to catch it. Cabrera's thinking Ramirez is going to catch it. Nobody catches it, and now the Angels have a runner on first base. What did we say last night? With Manny in left field, he makes some of the best catches of the year. And then some of the easier ones, eh, eh. right? That's all you can say That's on exactly that. That's exactly how you say That's it. Eh, eh. And so that goes as a single. And here's Eckstein, 14 sack bunts were among the leaders of the American League. Well, this is going to have to be a real good yes. run here because you don't have any speed at all at first base. Way in on the grass is Bill Miller at third. Angels ran themselves out of the inning in the bottom of the fourth inning. Pedro Martinez with a perfect pitch for the strikeout and throw him out at second base. Oh, and there's another miscue by the Red Sox. Although a big carom gets him off the schneid. My goodness gracious. Pedro with an errant throw past Millar. But that ball bounded back like a slap shot off the glass behind the net. Yeah, that ball goes between, between the legs. And what social going to say? Did it go in the stands? He's going to ask, where did it hit, right? He wants to know if maybe that ball hit. A photographer, or maybe hit a hand. Let's see if we can look slow. Well, see what he says. If we can slow it really, real, real slow, maybe we'll see where it hit. He's going to bring both Rungi, the first base umpire, and Larry Young, the right field line umpire. Big break for Boston right there. Well, and it's a big, big moment here in this ball game, trying to grab the lead right now. Mike Sosha, from where he was at, did not have a good view on what let's happened. See. Yeah, let's see. And well, we we're not going to tell. Didn't. It looked like it hit the, the wall on the up 
you know, on the uptick. Yep. Well, you can't blame him for complaining there. I mean, oh, he no. could have talked about Millar being in the way and, and all these different things. One foul. Worth a shot. Take a shot. Yes, talk absolutely. To the, Plus, talk he's, to he's been wanted to talk. Yes, exactly. Not necessarily <laughs> those two up yeah, You're absolutely right. Yeah, let me get out. How uh, are you, fellas? Frustration's been building for a few minutes for Mike Sosa. Sure, that ball didn't touch somebody's hand or hit a photographer's well, camera. Well, he's right. Ask, hey, we have a right field line umpire in the postseason. Let's get his yep. opinion. Why not? Next time, bunts it in the air. So now, fundamentally, the Angels having trouble with the bunts. Second time. I mean, they dropped a bunt back in the second inning after McPherson had singled in a run to make it 1-1. You know, and in fairness to them, too, though, Tony, uh, you didn't bunt a whole lot That's in right. your career. Stuff. But, you know, trying to get the sacrifice bunt down is one thing. Trying to do it off Pedro yep. when he knows you're trying to do it. And you already touched on the fact Molina doesn't run well either. Swing it away and pass Bellhorn into center field as Epstein. Damon with a quick bobble and the Angels with two on to begin the fifth. Boomer, I say this as a compliment, but he's just a little pest that Epstein. But you know what? Only to the opposing teams. They love him here. Now the crowd into it. Kyle Peterson. Thank you, Boom. Here with Theo Epstein, GM of the Boston Red Sox. Theo, obviously things are getting a little bit tight here, but 1-1 one, one game, the first couple innings, you guys get the bases loaded. How tough is it to just push one across? Well, a playoff game like this, both starting pitchers throwing their hearts out and everyone grinding their at-bats. You want to take advantage of all your opportunities to score. They did a good job getting out of the jam. You know, everybody's talked lately about Pedro's last four starts, but what do you think of what you've seen him so far? Oh, he's throwing great. He's got a good fastball, and he's... He made a good pitch right there, but no, he's, he, you know, he's, he's still Pedro Martinez, and uh, no one would rather have on the mound than uh, him and Curry in these two big games on the road. Yeah, you work off all offseason to put this team together. How difficult is it to GM to sit here knowing that you can't do anything during the game? Oh, it's easy for me. Those guys have to go out and play, and, uh, you know, every at back can change the game. So these guys have been through it before. I think going through it last year really helped us, and got a lot of faith in them just, like, sit back and watch it. Yeah, we appreciate your time. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Cool. All right, Kyle, thank you. Well, that's, it, it's tough. You know, it's up to the players now. But he's just sitting there and so involved, yet not involved yeah. during a game. Meanwhile, here is Darren Erstad with two on after that was Sean Figgins that popped up to Miller in foul ground. Oh! I get the kneecap? Well, they're pulling, but obviously there's no intention there. Yeah, but the intention when this game started for Pedro Martinez was to avoid this situation. Yep. Oh, man, inside of the kneecap. A little slider, a little cutter. Ooh, right off the kneecap. We banged up already, and that's going to leave a mark in the morning. Well, look, you see that number. And now coming to the plate, if timing is part of life, then what kind of time is this for Vladimir Guerrero to register his first postseason base hit? Oh, that was a heater up top, way up top. Ball one. So the runners hoping to get moving. Vladimir Guerrero hit one 400 feet for an out his last time up to dead center. Molina, Eckstein, first at on the bases. And the back two can run. Rick, right center field. This could score Erstad if there's a fumble. Nicks it up with it. Erstad's going to stop at third, but the Angels have played it two and taken a 3-1 lead.
one thing they say consistently about Vladimir Guerrero is that he prepares himself to perform every day. Tony, not all superstars do that. This guy has that same work that, he, that these Anaheim Angels have had for a couple of years. Well, that's just a nice piece of hitting by, by uh, Vladimir. That ball was up. That ball was out. And he didn't try to pull it. He went right with it to right center. He saw Erstad get hit on the kneecap the last at bat. He was flying around second base. Oh, yeah. The Angels have grabbed their first lead of this series. Vladimir Guerrero with a two-base knock. With a two-run single. Chris yeah. Berman, Tony Gordon, Rick Sutcliffe here. And Pedro Martinez still with two on. And not out of the woods with Garrett Anderson up. And it all began with a miscue in the outfield when Manny Ramirez and Orlando Cabrera couldn't communicate. And Molina, who scored the second run here, the Eagles' second run overall, should have been retired. Amazing how one mistake like that can just kind of mushroom turn into something huge and fortunately for Boston that's what's happened. Way inside that almost hit Garrett Anderson. I see a couple of the Red Sox fielders asking Veritek to ask for an appeal. Did he go on that? Because in trying to get out of the way, there's the barrel going through the zone. And I don't think there was any intent there for the swing, but he's just trying to get off that back. Yeah, trying to get off that that sore back left leg. Rip foot double play. Kevin Millar snares it. Doubles off Guerrero. 3-1 Anaheim. Welcome back to Southern California, where the Angels have their first lead of this series. And almost had more, except for that screamer hit by Garrett Anderson into a double play, turned by Kevin Millar at first. Now Erstad hit. <laughs> uh, uh, you don't know where I'm going with this. I'm Erstad right hit. You. Anderson, in, you know, almost hit. So, say hello. Causes one inside to Ortiz. Just say hello. That's all he's doing out there. Ortiz has walked and flown to center. Check swing. Foul ball. Tony, I agree with you. I think Molina's moving around a little bit too much there. But, you know, you take a look here. I, you, you looked at the bloop by Molina that fell for the base hit. You look at the bloop by Eckstein that fell for. And then that ball hit right on the nose and hits a double play. Yep. Right on the not fair sometimes, is it? Told you he was mad at me. Well, that was <laughs> self defense. <laughs> huh? He's been great. Talked about Cologne throwing that first pitch inside on Ortiz. Ortiz not going anywhere. He stepped right back in there. Fouls it off. That's 98 pitches now for Cologne. The most that he's thrown this year is 117. Although uh, most of those pitches we talked about were the first two innings, fellas. That's correct. First two innings. I think, Tony, you hit on a good point. I think Jose Molina was just sitting too far yep. outside on a lot of those early pitches. Yeah, when you're, when you're right. When you're not getting that call and you're setting up late like or, like Molina's doing, now this ball, plate, he man. wants to be off the plate. Now. Bat flying. Next time. Safe. Ortiz beats it out. Erskab didn't like it. Ortiz smelled that hit from the time it left the bat. You know, that bat flying just might freeze an infielder for a split second, huh? I'll bet that's the best time you have gotten on David Ortiz going down the line all year, yep. Tony. And it's a good call because he beat it. Yes, sir. And you just don't expect him to get down the line like that. But, you know, that play right there, we saw it last in, and the Angels got a break on that little blooper in the left field. Led to two hit, two runs. Him hustling down the line like he did, beating that ball out. 
Same can happen for the Red Sox. Trot Dixon, two fly ball outs to left. Away is Cologne. Ball one. Anaheim's been trying to get that sacrifice bunt down. They had 56 of them during the year. If you're looking for that with Boston, they <laughs> had 12 of them yeah. all year long. I don't think you're going to see Trot Nixon turn around and drop a bunt here unless he's putting for a base hit. That'll find the upper deck out of play. The Angels aren't even holding Ortiz on you know, first base. Wow. I mean, you're not going to. I mean, I'm just making light of the fact that Ortiz. Get a step. He got down the line quickly and got a base hit. hit. They're not gonna. They're not gonna hold you here. Where's Dad's gonna play cat and mouse a little bit? Way to Nixon again, two and one. See, I was talking about Molina setting up off the plate. You know, there comes a time where, as a catcher, you gotta you gotta make that decision. Look, he's not giving us this call right here. I need to get a little bit more on the plate to give him a good look at it. When the ball Ortiz hit, but they definitely wanted it off the plate. He made a good pitch. Ortiz shattered his bat, but just beat the play. Chopper, Figgins, Eckstein, first step, double play. A lot of people call this the surrender pitch. You're not surrendering a hit. You're just saying that my pitch count is way too high. So you go to that two seam sinking fastball. You hope that he hits it on the ground. You know one thing you don't need to throw any more pitches to him. He went with the sinking fastball. You can see Ortiz right on top of Exting. Look at him go in the air sacrifice his body turn around to make sure he got that double play. Speaking of double plays, the man that turned it in in the defensive half of the inning for Boston, Kevin Millar up. With about his fifth or sixth hairstyle of the season. Facial and top. This is the one that's worked the best. Boy, well, that sinking fastball has worked the best for Cologne tonight. He struck out Manny Ramirez on it earlier in the game, and then when he really needed to make a big pitch, you talk about his velocity and his slider and all that. I mean, that's probably his fourth pitch, but it was the most important and effective pitch for him to use in that situation. Look at it right here, man. Tony, all he's counting on is a little bit of late movement yep. to get a ground ball. There it starts to sink just a bit at the end. You see the hitter roll over on it. Get him out front a little bit so he can hit it on the ground. Just a tad, yep. Figgins the next time made a nice turn. That's how you throw complete games. That's how you throw over 200 innings a year. It's not that you're giving in. You're not giving up a hit. What you're doing is hoping for a little late movement and something that your infield can help you with. And, then, and that's, I think he struggled with that in the first half of the season because mechanically, yep. his ankle being sore, he just didn't have the kind of mechanic to get the ball to do what he wanted to do. 2 pitch, just missed. So the full count to Kevin Millar. We're ready in the bullpen right now. We saw do. Brendan Donnelly. See 108 pitches. But hey, this is what they want. Out of Cologne, he won six innings, 23 of his 34 starts. They have a superior bullpen. Eckstein can't get it. He was over in the hole against the pull hitting Millar, and Kevin is on with his second base hit. With his first base hit, he had uh, the two yesterday. Tomorrow on ESPN. Our division series presented by Budweiser continues at 4 Eastern. Houston, one behind the Rocket Man today at Atlanta. Mike Hampton going in that game, trying to heat one up with the Braves. The 20 game winner, Roy Oswald, goes. And then on our friends from Fox, the night game at 8 Eastern, the Dodgers and Cardinals. Jason Marquis against Jeff Weaver. The Cardinals looking very impressive, to say the least, with long ball and winning game one. 8-3. Today, 9-3. Rip by Veritek. Back it goes. Back, 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 back. We're tied up. And you know, 
still think he's wired. He sprinted around the bases like the ball was in play. 3-3. Three, three. Just like that. Malone made a great pitch to get the double play. And Millar hits a tough pitch for a base hit. Veritek comes up, gets a ball right in the middle of the K-zone. And when you get a ball right in the middle of the K-zone, that's usually what happens. Somebody's going to hit it hard. This one goes out of the ballpark. Look at that. Baratek is such a heart and soul of this team. And that whole team can just strike so quick. Yeah. Most runs in baseball, 949 in the regular season. Look at him, Boomer, like you said, he can't get those shin right. bars on quick enough. Two pitches, and they're all on. Oh, by the way, he just did a homer. Take a cup of water. <laughs> He's unbelievable. 0-2 oh, to Orlando Cabrera. Now well, one more out maybe and we might have seen Donnelly that yep. would have been it for Cologne and Mike Sosha just going oh. Well it's been a night about what ifs. Yeah. You get the sacrifice bunt down you catch the fly ball. Yep. Third base Dallas McPherson over to Erstad Cabrera out but the Red Sox have tied it. Two run shot off the bat of Jason Baratek. Tied anew because of Jason Baratek, one of the just a handful of Red Sox around with that start years ago. We showed you by Cologne. He scored five runs in that game, 1999, just to show you that life can be cyclical. And here he is with a two run homer off Cologne, evening this game again. Pedro Martinez coming up and into Troy Gloss to start things off here in the home half of the sixth inning. Chris Berman, Rick Sutcliffe, Tony Gwynn, Kyle Peterson down in the field. Glad you could join us for this thriller. Six fives not out of the question, boys. <laughs> I know there's good bullpens. We're getting better and better. Terry Francona talking about Veritek, how he never carries an at bat back onto the field when he goes out to catch. I don't think he would complain if he took a smile out there with him right now. <laughs> he doesn't have one now. He's business calling this thing. Popped up. Kevin Millar. Old Mattingly, Keith Hernandez, Wes Parker over there makes the play. And now Donnelly has sat down. Francisco Rodriguez, K-Rod. Uh, certainly made a name for himself in that 2002 magical postseason by the Angels. Just unhittable and no one had ever seen him before. It was like the, the natural or, or Sid Finch, the guy that was throwing 140 miles an hour in the bullpen for April Fool's by George Clay. Like, where did they get this guy? He still throws about 140, to, maybe 140 <laughs> Canadian. <laughs> Swing it behind that pitch is Jeff Devannon, who's two for two off Pedro tonight. Cologne was just one out away from handing over a two-run lead with just three innings to go to that great bullpen, but with one swing of the bat, Veritek changed things. The other way, you know, only eight, you know, even though it's past midnight in Boston and most people in the New England area, what they call Red Sox Nation, would be normally counting sheep. They're counting pitches right now. You just know it. Every oh, Pedro, he's pitched 82. How long do we leave him in? Is it pitch count? Is it feel? I think if, you're, if you're Terry Frank, I think it's tough. You see, he's still got good velocity on a fastball. Still locating the ball good. I'm telling you, if I'm Terry Francona and it gets to 100, I'm going to get him. <laughs> I'm not going to let him. Wow. He's... I'm not. I mean, he tried to do that earlier this year, just literally, I mean, three weeks ago. Left Pedro out there for the eighth inning. It didn't work. And wow. I mean, booed at home. And then they have had a great, great year. I, you got to go get him. I mean, it's just the track record says that at 100, he's done. Yeah, but 83, so he could get out of this year. I mean, 
So you're saying seven at most, barring the, the three pitching. Well, I might let him go until Vladimir Guerrero comes back. <laughs> then, I, then I want a fresh body out there. I might run Schilling out there just for one hitter. Okay. But the other thing, he's run into the bottom half of this lineup, and, and they've had some success against him. So I think that might be a telltale sign. Now that you mentioned Schilling very quickly, a lot of people saw the injury. Well, that he pulled up a little lame at covering the first base on the well, on the throw that he made. They had the X-rays, uh, precautionary X-rays. They were negative. Uh, he's had an ankle problem all year long. This was a little higher up. Uh, and they don't expect him to miss his next start, which would be at earliest game five, if there is one here at Anaheim. You know, we Sunday. found out something for the game. I didn't know. I knew he was getting shots, you know, for the pain. I didn't know Kurt Schilling was getting shots actually during the game so that he can continue to pitch during the regular season this year. Full count to defend. Chopper, Bellhorn, Noir, two outs. Such usually some shots are taken after the game. Yeah. Yes, they are. October, eight teams, one champion. The race to the World Series is on. Catch all the action at ESPN at ESPN2. Don't miss it. I'm sure that Kurt Schilling had a couple of shots after the game. I mean, there was a lot of pain in that ankle. You could see how he just... You never you had take any shots after the game? Never mind. Dallas McPherson, one for two. This bottom part of the order, they've all gotten hits. Devannon with two hits. McPherson, Molina, Eckstein have a hit. Hadn't seen a fastball yet, have A lot of off speed stuff. He hadn't, he hadn't even fouled off that changer. I do like the fact it looks like he's spreading out a little bit here. He's, trying, he's to, trying to stay back. But every time Martinez throws in one, no. it's in the strike zone. 90 pitches now for Pedro. He's given up just six hits. Three runs and six hits. Cologne giving up three runs and seven hits. Mm -hmm. So we're not the flamethrower you always were. How about that pitch? 3-3. ESPN's coverage of Major League Baseball's Division Series presented by Budweiser. Some of the magazine covers and certainly two years ago, K-Rod, Francisco Rodriguez came from nowhere in September to become a postseason hero. How has he done this year? Well, his future's so bright, he's got to wear shades. This year, 84 innings pitched. And 123 strikeouts. I mean, that's like Dibble-esque, you know, with a 13, 14 per nine innings average. Yeah, you know, the last time he lost a game, you got to go back to the month of June this year. Face the bottom of Boston's order, Bill Miller. One for two, singled in the second score to run on a base load of walk by Manny Ramirez. Miller, then Damon and Bellhorn. It's about, you know, he looks, it's the difference of a defense, of a nose tackle and a scat back if you're the batter at the mound looking at these guys, right? Cologne to Prince to K Rod? Yeah. Kind of giddy up. off. So deceptive. Yeah. Too. All of that leg movement and how quick he picks it up and puts it down. And then you know that Uncle Charlie is on the pass list mm -hmm. tonight. You know it is. That with, breaking ball is as good as it comes, with, Boomer. With all this movement, it's got to be pretty hard to find a baseball. Chopped. Wide. Got a big leg kick. And out of all of that, you got to find it. You see the spin on that breaking ball. 
and that's in slow motion. Yeah, I I could see it on TV. I couldn't see it so <laughs> when I was hitting. That's pretty quick. <gasps> Off the glove. Figgins bobbles. Miller safe. That'll go as a base hit, the second of the night for Bill Miller. He's going to take a clean field and throw to get Miller. It's a play, though, that could have been made. Yeah. I mean, he yeah. is having some problems defensively. Uh, Figgins had some problems in the bottom of the fifth inning up there to put down a sacrifice bunt. Wasn't able to get it done. I mean, he was so important to this ball club this year and all of the things that he did. But Tony, right now, it just seems like he's pressing. Yeah. Well, Dave Roberts has gone into pinch run. Manager Terry Francona electing to keep an extra position player, specifically Roberts, for exactly this sort of situation. Being one less pitcher than people thought, Williamson did not make the postseason roster. Well, see, that's what's happened to Mike Sosha's bench. I mean, that's exactly what Figgins did for him a couple of years ago. You could use him. You could insert that speed when you needed it to win a ball game. He doesn't have that luxury now. He doesn't have that on his bench. Figgins has become an everyday player. I mean, this is as good as a double here. Roberts is such a good base deal. And this is the move in the late part of the season that Theo Epstein made that did not get the headline. Yeah. So Nomar gone, Cabrera in the short, even man Cabbage from the Twins. Oh, by the way, Dave Roberts kind of lost in the shuffle. With him and Damon, if they both got on, a completely different look for yep. the Red Sox. Well, this this situation, especially because Rodriguez has got the big high leg here. And there for a strike to Damon. Now, yep. he is at four straight hits over the latter part of game one and then game two before he was retired on a shot to Dallas McPherson at third. Even got the third both times in innings number one and number two, but was stranded there. Red Sox squandered two bases, loaded opportunities, scoring just one run. Roberts is a base stealer. I mean, it, it, the Red Sox, you go through their history, it's a pretty short list. <laughs> Tommy Harper is on there, and there's one or two others, but it, it's not exactly the greater Boston phone book when you list the <laughs> base stealing <laughs> threats in the history of the Boston Red Sox. Roberts really became that great base stealer when he put on that Los Angeles Dodger uniform and had the opportunity to work with a former Dodger great, Maury Wills. Nobody better at it than him. For a strike, Damon thought it'd be a little high. Oh. Looks like Rodriguez kind of caught his feet on that release to the plate. Everybody trying to get a look yeah, quick. Yeah, Roberts, yeah. Roberts, I think was kind of caught by that too. He he wanted to go. We talked about this yesterday. He got a base dealer on like that. One of Think about holding the ball, disrupting the timing of the base run. Damon slaps to short. This will be a tough turn. Figgins, but Damon wrist runs too quickly. Well, but now you lose that base stealer. You pick the opportunity you wanted for him to steal a base, and he never in any one of those three pitches took off to get in that direction. I think you've got to give a lot of credit to Rodriguez, Tony, for like you said. He, he changed his tempo. He threw over several times, and now you get that out, and the stolen base does not become as important as it would have with nobody out. Absolutely, because now with one out, it's a little different. you got a different type of hitter at the plate now with one out, and Johnny Damon, no question, is a threat to go. With Bellhorn up, and of course he's going to keep an eye on Damon. Among the uh, resume, as you take a look at Roberts, the resume of Frankie Rodriguez, he was the youngest pitcher to ever win a World Series game at 20 years of age, 286 days. He and Fernando Valenzuela were the only two to win two postseason games before they were 21 years of age. 22, doesn't turn 23 till later in the year. 
to that one to Bell Warren, one and oh. Five wins, 28 strikeouts, two Octobers ago in the postseason. Hello. That is amazing. Johnny Damon wants to run here, but like we talked about, Rodriguez is doing a nice job of varying his deliveries to the plate, holding the ball, making that runner wait. Good block by Molina now. Wait a minute. Strike ball. I thought it was something else. Yeah, he thought. He went Tried around. to check his swing and he did. Could he went not. around. He went around. Good job of a screen shot here. <laughs> yeah, and had the runner been going, it yeah. would have been interference there because you saw Bellhorn continue to fall out over the plate. Big leg kick. I got to take a shot. I got to take a shot at trying to get myself in scoring position. Yeah, well, here's a guy that can play him from wherever. On deck, Manny Ramirez. And what? Molina can throw. But we know. We, we saw him throw. Better get a jump. Pick off Billhorn earlier. We talked about the World Championship a couple of years ago for Anaheim. Of the 11 wins they picked up that they needed to win it, eight of them came by rookies. Five of them by K Rod here, two of them from Lackey, and one of them from Donald. They're grizzled veterans now. <laughs> now. Two and one to Bellhorn. Maybe. thing that happens when Rodriguez comes into the game things just go a whole lot slower especially if runners get on to make a quality pitch here there goes Damon throw in the dirt check so the one base dealer out of out of there with Roberts but here's your main base dealer even had the, the correct pitch to do it with, yeah. did the Angels. And that big leg kick, you can't help but take a shot at it. Molina had to hurry. Everybody's falling down right now. You're right. I mean, we, we, we saw it earlier. We, we, we saw Roberts not be able to get a jump. We saw K-Rod almost fall down as he went to throw a pitch. And it looked like right there, we saw Bellhorn slip when he got picked off at second. Molina almost fell down, and he had a high fastball to handle, and yet that left foot, he just couldn't get it planted. Take a look at his left foot here. I mean, he, he comes out, he knows what he's doing. Look at him, I mean, he almost falls down there, spinning out. I mean, that throw bounced on the grass. Shot, but wide of first. It's not as if they're tough field conditions. You wouldn't. It certainly didn't look like it. This guy's trying to do stuff too fast. Trying to do it too quickly. Yeah. I mean, you can't get much perfect in more perfect conditions than this. Short sleeve night. Yeah. You got, you got these young guys out there. Molina wasn't here two years ago. Biggins wasn't here. A little moisture, I guess. I mean, you can see with the fog, it, it, it kind of fog. A little moisture on the tarp, but I, I don't, I'm not using that as an excuse. I'm not buying it. The Angels have played here all year long. They play night games. Get the oh, rain the dirt, hand. not the grass. Yeah, They're falling on the back. Full count to Bellhorn, meanwhile. Damon at second. And here it is again. Manny Ramirez to the chagrin of Mike Sosha. That ball had so much tilt on it. Mike Sosha thinks it caught the bottom half of the K zone. Let's take a look. He took one away from him there and at the worst possible time for the Anaheim Angels. 
See, Mike Sochi's asking Molina now, where was that ball? Manny has come up with two on and none out in the first and struck out. He drew a bases loaded walk in the second with Boston's first run. So he's come up now with this is now seven runners has had a chance to play. Swings and misses strike one. There wouldn't be a whole lot of history with these two guys. Just 0 for 2. Manny Ramirez against Rodriguez. Tough to get a read on guys on the edge. Yeah. He throws this hard. Has this good of stuff. He only gets a scene two times in two years. You know, he said he got a base load of walk to drive and when he almost drove in three when the other way off Cologne in the second it was <laughs> just missed the foul ball. Anybody have better sound effects than Boomer? No, no, it's <laughs> <laughs> well, Trey, you know, the budget's low. We don't have as much of the sound effects yeah, as the truck as yeah. we usually have. Concerned about a home run, he'll take one. Does a little bleeder will score Damon with the go-ahead run here in the seventh. And there for a strike. Obviously, looking for something else, huh? Yeah. And it goes in two breaking balls to start him off. Comes back with a 94 mile per hour fastball. Yeah, you got to pick one. I think he did. I think the first pitch he picked fastball yeah. got breaking ball. Yeah. So I thought he changed there a little bit. And he throw me two. Let me look for three. But now you get a little bit defensive. And yeah. K. Rod can make the good pitch. He can get that ground ball he needs here. Bounces away. Molina loses it. So Damon to third. Bellhorn to second. It's going to go as a wild pitch because it caught dirt before it hit glove, but that is a ball Mike Sosha knows has to be blocked. Yeah. You know the breaking ball is coming. Watch what Molina does with his glove here. Instead of turning it over, watch how he just tries to catch it. He reaches down there to get it. You've got to get your body in front of that ball. Turn your glove over the other way. You're not a shortstop. You're a catcher. That's what all of that gear is for. Absolutely right. Oh, that's a big, big spot. Infield in. Boy. You talk about perilous positions with Manny Ramirez up. And a ball coming in perhaps with smoke and going out with more of it. How about his eye at the plate? He's got a pretty good one. And again, it gets back to you knowing yourself and knowing what you can do. Ball starts in the zone, runs out. Three and two. One out. Two runners in scoring position. Three three game. Top seven. To center, Garrett Anderson, Damon tagging. Not even contested. Boston has the lead. That's been the key to Boston's success all year long. Johnny Damon gets on. He uses his speed to get into scoring position. And then either Manny Ramirez or David Ortiz drives him in. He finally centers a breaking ball. Man, he finally got the pitch he was looking for. He got it far enough into the outfield for Damon to score. He got Boston back that lead. And if there's no wild pitch, that situation doesn't happen. Yep. Meanwhile, with the dangerous David Ortiz up, he had the 41 homers. But Trot Nixon will get a chance. David Ortiz is going to be intentionally walked. He's with mere 
139 ribbies. Two out runs. Lake. Managers. Gray, if you're the other side. Yeah. Well, what really bothers him right now is the fact that they're giving away runs and they're giving away bases. Yeah. All the unearned run yesterday took the game away from what could have been a ball game and an opportunity to win. And now the wild pitch that should not have been puts runners up 90 feet and an opportunity really for Tri Nixon to break this thing open. Speaking of gray, man, gray haired managers, two hour Gene Mock is here. I don't know if the two out situations made him that grave. A proud manager of the Angels. Let him so close to the World Series. Boy, a good baseball. 82 and 86, man. absolutely. And get, couldn't get enough credit for the type of skipper he was. They hold 64 against him in Philly and, of course, here in Anaheim. But against to the Angels up there in the box with Jackie Autry. And meanwhile, I'm sure he's hoping quietly that Frankie Rodriguez can get to Trot Nixon and keep this a one run game. Breaking ball in there for a strike. Tony, most of the time a guy has either got a good curveball and a so-so slider or the other way around. This is that rare combination of both for Rodriguez. Yeah. So really, you're facing a guy like Rodriguez, you got to look for the fastball. Try to adjust for that breaking ball or anything else. Chop to Erstad. He'll take it himself. And the damage is done. Just one run, but a huge run scored by the Red Sox. Pedro will come out to hurl the bottom of the seventh with a lead. ESPN's Major League Baseball Division Series, presented by Budweiser. Budweiser, grab a cold, fresh Budweiser. It's game time. The Red Sox have pushed across the go-ahead run here in their half of the seventh. Seventh inning stretch time here in Anaheim. And the Angels trying desperately not to fall behind 0-2 and winging it to Boston for game three on Friday. Meanwhile, the Mart out of the SPN counts football primetime presented by Cooper Tires. 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 out here on the West Coast. The Clemson Tigers against the Virginia Cavaliers. Also available in high definition on ESPN HD. You can call your cable operator, direct TV, or the Dish Network today. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. Now, tonight in the American League has certainly been outstanding. Tight ball game. So, if you joined us late, Red Sox ran themselves out of a huge inning in the second when Bellhorn was picked up by Belita. Meanwhile, Kevin Millar snaring this bullet by Garrett Anderson to the Angels. We're taking a 3-1 lead right here. But tied with the Red Sox on Jason Baratek's home run. And a wild pitch in the top of the second put Johnny Damon at third base, which allowed Manny Ramirez to step up and hit a sack fly. So defensive changes. Kevin Euclid is now the third baseman for the Red Sox, and he'll go instead of Billy Miller at first base, although Kevin Millar has played brilliantly. Mankiewicz is a gold glove, and so Doug Mankiewicz is at first, and still on the mound with everything you'd want if you're the Boston side of the fence here. Pedro Martinez with a 4-3 lead to pitch for seven. So look, we came into the night, fellas, with the biggest question, what kind of Pedro Martinez would we see tonight? You're looking at the numbers, six hits, the three runs, five Ks. You've seen the competitor of Pedro Martinez. You know, the big thing for me, too, Burma, is the fact that we have seen the velocity back, Tony, from Pedro yeah. Martinez tonight. We know that he can pitch, and when he doesn't have that velocity, he can still win, but it sure helps. Yeah. Casey Kotchman, one of their young bats, very little major league experience. Kotchman. Top draft pick a couple years ago, 2001. He's the pitch hitter for Jose Molina, so the older brother Benji will go into catch. So, Kochman, Eckstein, and Figgins. Pedro gloves it himself, and that's an out. Look, you cannot overstate. 
can't say we're shocked with the lefty Mike Myers and the righty Mike Timlin. It's too strong in his last night, but it's up there again. You cannot overstate the way Pedro Martinez has come out to pitch tonight. Son. Yeah. Well, and he's still under 100 pitches right now. You know, he, he still has that look in his eye. I mean, you can see the excitement in him. But they're not going to go too far with him. And to me, too far is sending up the, the, the go-ahead run to face Pedro. If he goes one, two, three, I let him go. But if somebody gets you would, one, you would let him go the next inning after one, two, three? No, 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 no. This, this would be the last yeah, inning yeah. for me. Okay. But if somebody gets on in this inning, that would be it. Oh. Two and out to David next time. Now Pedro Martinez, though, has a chance to up his postseason mark lifetime to five and a one. Well, and you had to figure that the dynamic duo, as far as the American League goes anyway, with Schilling and Pedro, would get it done and be difficult to beat. They had 37 wins this year, the most by any American League teammates. The first pair of Boston Red Sox pitchers ever with 200 or more strikeouts in a season. Pedro Martinez, Kurt Schilling, I mean, they're just two of the best pitchers in, 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 in you know, the last 10 years. Manager Terry Francona, you got to feel pretty pretty good about the outing Martinez is giving you tonight. He's gotten you to the seventh inning. you got a one-run lead. He's still located. Well, now you got to manage. Exactly. And I, 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 agree with, I agree with you. I think <laughs> he gets into any kind of trouble here, he's probably going to see a move to the bullpen. But you've got the nine hitter hitting and the leadoff hitter coming up after him. And he just reached his 100th pitch. He had enough face in Pedro. I think he can get nine and one out. And if he doesn't, okay, I'm not afraid to go to the bullpen. Again, fouled off. Began the telecast with this. His last four starts, two losses to the Yankees, two to Tampa Bay. This is more like the first 29 starts. Not maybe like some of his starts in years past. When he's unhittable. But you can get this from him with this kind of offense. Maybe that's the that told us before the game tonight. This is the kind of bat you got to have against Pedro. It's chilling listening to Ortiz there. Be able to foul off pitches. Uh, he fouled off about six, seven in a row here. The tenth pitch, and there's a back coming up. He's making. Terry Francona's decision a whole lot easier as we go. He keeps fouling off pitches. I love what Pedro's doing here, though. He's, 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 let's try. Let's let's. I've just been throwing fastballs, and he's just been fouling them off. Let's, let me reassess this situation. Figure out how I can get this and bat over with. Now, you know what he did? He just gave his arm a little bit of time to regroup. That last fastball was 95 miles an hour. This has been a special performance by a guy who has been special for a long time. You gotta think after a while, you get tired of him fouling off pitches here. He's gonna try to make a pitch to get him out. Now it's getting a little closer to the field of play, but not that much. So now the 12th pitch in this advance coming up. A dirty dozen at this point. Next time to left. Manny Ramirez back, but he's not going to have enough punch to get it out. And so an epic battle there with 12 pitches. But there are two outs and coming up now. The Sean Figgins coming up. Where's the green monster when you need it? Oh, huh? right. And on the way back to the dugout, he kind of gave Eckstein a little pat on the back, saying, way to battle. And that conversation there on the mound with Minkiewicz, I mean, paying attention to detail, they're talking about what if Figgins were to lay down a bunt and bring it with him. 
And Kavich has to guard the line. He's going to stay deep. Telling Pedro anything in front of him, you got to get. Euclid is in on the grass at third base. So if this is to be the out, we assume this is the final batter. Pedro Martinez will face tonight. And he has given himself and the Red Sox a chance to win it. Ahead 0 and 2 to Figgins. One for eight, and this young man is such a, such a great kid. He's really struggled in these two games, most notably in the field. But it, they, they call him Mini Me. I mean, he is best friends with Vladimir Guerrero. I mean, they play catch before the mm -hmm. game. They're constantly together, and you know, he, he does kind of look like a Mini Me standing next to Vlad. <laughs> now, so figures to make him do the same thing. And I'm looking at Pedro's. You showed earlier, son, you were looking at the motion of the push off of the bottom of the, of the pants. The only thing I, I, I think is maybe a little more wider bell bottom for Pedro. <laughs> he just seems that's to be him favoring team. that back leg a little bit for whatever reason. I mean, that's where he, he just doesn't push off like he used to consistently do. Bell bottoms. That's how they like them nowadays. The longer the better, huh, then? Yeah. They doing that at San Diego State too? They try to, but no. <laughs> I'm just friends with. Well, his, his velocity is still good. Mm -hmm. I agree with both of you guys. He just doesn't seem to get that same kind of push off that he that he had in the past. But you know, his his motion is still good. The velocity yep. is still good. Yep. He's, you know what? He's still Pedro Martinez. That's right. That rotation is tight there. We've seen the good change ups with the move. Biggin just worked his way back to a full count here. Let's see. He's got the kind of breaking ball that you can hear the fingers come off that seam when you're standing there at the, at the plate. Bat flies. Ball foul. Let's see here. What are we doing? Let's see. Should go ahead and take get, it. Go ahead. Can I? Oh, said, here you can, go. He, can you get him another one? He'll probably, he'll probably try to hook him up later. Should. They're so good at this ballpark, and it all starts with the guy that owns this team, Artie Moreno. I mean, you talk about a guy that is fan friendly. He is every bit of that. You know what I mean? Again. I think that's the biggest thing about what Mr. Moreno did in the offseason. He, he gave. General Manager Bill Stoneman the opportunity to go out and bring in free agents instead of using the great farm system Tony that they have to trade for them. I mean that gives this team an opportunity to not only be good now but to be good for a long time. Look at this another one. So now we go to the 10th pitch coming up. We had 12 with X9. Pedro is about to throw his 116th pitch on the night. Right. They're just making it. If these are the, you're going to pitch a 9 and 1 and get out, boy, they're making it work. But he does it. Pedro Martinez has pitched seven strong innings. And he knows that it'll be turned to the pen. He's given Boston everything they need. We've played seven here in Anaheim. And the Red Sox have a four to three lead. Top of the eighth inning and uh, hugs and handshakes all around for Pedro Martinez as he ends the seventh with the strikeout of Sean Figgins after two long at bats with X9 and Figgins. You pointed it out the velocity is still very high on his final pitch. One sixteenth and final pitch. So we begin the eighth inning. Doug Mankip, Benji Molina is the new catcher, the uh, elder brother by one year. Jose Molina, who pinch hit for Doug Mankiewicz, who came in for defensive purposes for Millar. Gets the bat fly into the dugout and has the ball going to right field. Base hit. So. 
Whichever bearded first baseman is up for the Red Sox seems to be getting on base. Barr was one for three, and Mankiewicz now one for one. Mankiewicz, one of the few guys in baseball with good numbers off of K-Rod. Now three for six, hitting right at 500. Very impressive. Biggest blow of the night, hit by this man, Jason Veritek. Down 3-1. His two-run homer with two out in the sixth. Off of Bartolo Colon tied this game. Behind that pitch by K-Rod. Watching him swing from the left side, Tony. His first couple of bats, he was pulling off of everything. And for some reason, Colon decided to try to run that yeah. cut fastball in on him. And he ran into a two-run home. And, and good for him. He was right on it. Anaheim will bring up the heavy metal in the eighth inning. Erstad, Guerrero, Anderson, and then Gloss fourth. I'm still trying to figure out how McCabe's ball goes in the right field, but the barrel went into the stands over here. The oh, break on that pitch. Uh, here's the blast by Baratek in the sixth inning. And it was a no doubter. Started that ball in and ended up right in the middle of the plate. And you got to give him credit because the first couple at bats, he just couldn't handle that fastball away. And that hit him. That hit Baratek. And so now. This is Mickey Rodriguez is two on against him with none out. Killer instinct, Boomer. You get somebody down, you don't let him up. He's not going to move. He, he, he knows what's going on. Look at that there. He might spin a little bit. Got me. Now we've got two men on and nobody out. Battling, battling, battling. Cologne did it. Pedro Martinez did it. They're trying to take this game and a two to nothing lead in this series right now. This Angel team, this isn't one of those teams you want to let hang around. Let them hang around thinking they got a chance to get back in this thing. You get a chance to put them away, you got to try to do that. Now, along with their bullpen yep. being rested from the ball game yesterday, that, you know, we didn't see that rally monkey either. So, I mean, he's he's ready to go tonight. Yep. <laughs> if they can stay yeah, close, you're right. he will make an appearance. Two innings of work here, K Rock. Well, they all bring the monkeys here. I mean, they're not, they're not there for the Red Sox getting runs here in the eighth, I can tell you that. Showing one is Cabrera pulling it back. With McPherson charging at third. That wasn't a bad idea for Cabrera to pull that back. Mike Sosha put on the wheel play there where the shortstop Beckstein breaks towards the third base bag and everybody at the corner charges. Tony, there's just nowhere to put that bunt down. Look at where everybody was coming. They would have easily had to force play at third. Yeah. This guy's got great baseball instincts to grow. That'll be foul. So now it's 0 and 2. You know, all night long, it's been amazing. We've seen. These situations come up where you need to bunt, you need to block a ball. You know, this is a situation, first and second, nobody out. You just need to get a bunt down and move the runners up 90 feet. And he pops this ball up and Molina can't get to it, but now he's got two strikes. So we've seen both sides here in tonight's game not execute very well. They'll put themselves in a, in a situation where scoring runs. Instead of scoring runs with outs, they've had to get base hits in order to score. O2 to Cabrera with two on. Running with two strikes, fouls it off, so he's a strikeout. Either great pitching or just bad fundamentals. This is, this is one of those situations where you wonder if he tried to bunt this on his own. You know, if he was going to try to bunt on his own, Tony, don't you think he should have squared around Absolutely. a lot sooner than he did? Is he trying to fool somebody? 
I don't mind the fact that he continued to try to butt there, but turn around. I mean, give yourself up. Say, hey, this is what I'm doing now. First at bat of the game for Kevin Euclid. Wow. String pulled on him. That's almost not fair. Coming up to the plate for the first time. You got 95 on the fastball and a big hook like that one. Euclid's in defensive purposes for Bill Miller. Mankiewicz and Veritek aboard. Chopper, that'll be wide. The first. Now, Frederick is ahead quickly, 0-2. Johnny Damon, though, on deck. Yeah, just don't feel that he's cruising through here. You said this the whole series. I think Johnny Damon's made his impact already. Oh, yeah. Not done yet. That's really been a big difference the last couple of nights. Johnny Damon on base three times yesterday, three times again tonight. Dickens, on the other hand, had a base hit in five at bats yesterday and is currently 0 for 4 right now in the ball game tonight. Two K's by K Rod with two men on. Now brings Damon to the plate with two on. In the box and out of the box. We've seen that all night long. Started out making it look like a strike and ended up not being a strike. The K zone with K Rod with a K. I mean, with, with Euclid. Euclid. Very good. Here's Johnny Damon. Mankiewicz leads off second. Pitch up high. Veritek off first. Get a little nervous now. You see a guy hang a breaking ball that bad, Tony. That arm speed's starting to slow down a little bit. You're starting to fatigue. The other thing, when you hang one like that, you're letting that hitter get a good look at it. That one goes over everything and rolls all the way. Oh, he almost came around it man Kavich was a third of the way to the play and almost went out of play and, and I, that ball was just airmail or oh, just completely crossed up Molina was looking breaking ball I saw his feet spread so that he could get into it see how wide he is he's in a position to block the breaking ball if it's in the dirt look at him go down he, he had no chance to get up there home plate umpire Jerry Meals very lucky that ball didn't get yes. him and I think Anaheim is lucky that McCavish didn't continue to come because yep. Molina had problems picking that ball up. Look at Johnny Damon. He said, come on. He knows how difficult it is to get a hit off of Francisco Rodriguez, particularly with two outs as there are now. But if he does get a hit with two outs, there'll be two runs scored, perhaps. With Veritek on the back half. There it is, two runs, and it's the Red Sox forte thus far. I think that experience. They have so much more experience in the postseason than ever. Two only takes it for a strike. Second, 
Figgins stumbles with it, but has time to throw Damon out it. Two more runners are stranded. We head to the bottom of the eighth inning here at Anaheim. Boston four, Anaheim three. By Budweiser. And if you call for it, he will come. The rally monkey officially out. In full force. One of the craziest things I've ever seen before. That worked three years ago. I mean, I'm, not really, I'm still not really sure what to, what to say about it. Except that, what was that old song? It's monkey time. Hey, hey, we're the monkey. Well, with them too. I mean... I'm telling you, I, we saw it work back in 2002. Man. Hey, hey, we are the monkeys. I mean, don't forget when Dusty Baker came out and took the ball from Russell Ortiz. Don't bring that up, will you? Why are you bringing that up? Because I'm an equal opportunity employee. I mean, I'm, I'm with the Angels. I'm well, with when, the he took the ball, the when he took the ball, the monkeys came out. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, well, they'd they come were. out to start oh, the game. I know. Meanwhile, Mike Timlin's come out after two brilliant innings yesterday. He closed the game on that, you know, he finished it, of which he struck out the side in the ninth. That included Erstad and Guerrero, who are the first two guys he faces here in inning number eight. Buckle your seatbelts. I know it. Back in the Northeast, it's 1.15 in the morning. Put another log on the fire. <laughs> yeah, well, this is why uh, when you put your lineup together, you like to do that left-right, left-right thing, Tony. Yeah. Because you kind of put the seat belt on the opposing manager as to which route to go. You might think that, well, why don't he bring Mike Myers in here, the left-hander, to face Erstad? Well, Terry Francona does not want Myers to face Vladimir Guerrero. So what does he do? He brings Timlin in to get two out. He wants him to face these two guys and then bring Myers in because Garrett Anderson is one for 14 against Mike Myers. And Keith Folt, the closer, did not work yesterday in the big win by Boston 9-3, but he will be on at some point if the score remains like this. First ad, swing and a miss it at Timlin. Timlin, as we told you yesterday, wears World Series rings from the back-to-back -back champion Blue Jays, 92 and 93. He's been at this a long while. He did everything he could last year for Boston, only allowing one hit in nine and two-thirds innings in the postseason. A big game guy. And you can see right, right now, I mean, Erstad is just really struggling. Yeah, in zone. he's not seeing the ball real well out of Timlin's hand. The last two pitches have been up and out. Mm. You see him on that back leg not really being able to shift it. Not really seeing the ball that well. 0 for 2 and a hit pitch tonight. After a 3 for 4 and home run game 1 for Erstad. Timlin. And a foul. Timlin now 38 years young. 14th season in the bigs. Timlin from Midland, Texas. It's also in postseason with St. Louis. 23rd postseason game. He's not his first rodeo. But not his either. Boy, when you need a big hit, who's better at it than Darren Erstad? Such a competitor, such a clutch player. Maybe it is the monkey. Not an easy pitch to handle either. Look at where this pitch is. Up and out. Doesn't try to pull it. Goes with it. Tie and run is on. Good time to sacrifice bunt, huh, Tony? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> Vladimir Guerrero, his two-run single in the fifth, gave the Angels a 3-1 lead. Look where the outfield is playing. <laughs> you're right. You're right. Starting right for Trot Nixon is he's uh, 
He's a good San Clemente. Four or five steps from the warning right. track. He's in San Clemente out there. And then Damon in center field is down, I don't know, down toward Oceanside, isn't he? <laughs> They don't want a ball to be hit over their head. In there for a strike, and Guerrero said, wait. You know what, I think he's got every right to complain here. Mike Stosha has not been happy all night. You can see where Veritek is sitting. Take a look there. I mean, it, 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 that is one of those borderline calls. Anaheim has been trying to get all night. They did not. Boston just did. Right? That signal goes down low, and Guerrero holds off. Yeah, I give these pitchers a whole lot of credit. They just, they might not have been getting the call, but they keep going there. They keep trying to hit that spot. Tillman got the call on the last pitch, and he comes down and in. Tries to get Erstad leading the wrong way. Not a bad move. Almost did. There's one guy that's not worried about getting a little dirt on his uniform, I would say, would be the one-time member of the national championship football team at Nebraska, Darren Erstad. He doesn't try to fool you, Tony. He just keeps pounding that fastball. A lot of movement from Timlin. I mean, you see the two seamers, some nasty sink at times. Thing that starts out in the inner half is going to have that late movement coming in towards him. He's looking for something to extend on. Yeah, he's looking for something to start out out over the plate. Yeah. Oh, that just ripped foul. Third base coach Ron Renick, he didn't have much of a chance to get out of the way. He just stood there and whoop, I think he heard it. Watch like this. And oh. Simon walks off the mound to talk to himself. Pretty much been inside on the inner half of the plate. He struck him out last night of the ninth, but this strike is a whole lot bigger. One out in the Angel League. And as you called it, shot Terry Francona to the mound. Timlin gets the very dangerous Vlad Guerrero. Should be the lefty Myers. To go to Garrett Anderson. We'll be back. In a raucous Angel Stadium. The Thundersticks, the Rally Monkey, and the Lefty. Left handed specialist Mike Myers. Another one of the acquisitions below the radar in midseason by the Red Sox this year. And he's been really special in this situation here, as we mentioned before. One for 14 for Garrett Anderson against Myers. And as you suppose, son, 
you know, he's in for one batter with the righty Gloss next, then it'll be Falk to hold down the fort, correct? Yeah, but Gloss has got pretty good numbers against Falk, so that's not going to bother him near as much as when Garrett Anderson, he, he didn't even need to look down that bullpen. He knew what was going to happen. Anderson 0 for 3 tonight. Myers with that odd delivery, almost like he scrapes the dirt when he throws. What'd you do off Myers, son? Not very much. <laughs> you know, I, because he changes your arm angle so, or so your eye angle so much. Changes speeds on that yeah, breaking ball. It's so difficult. And all night long, you're used to seeing a guy throwing the ball from about shoulder height, and now all of a sudden he's scraping his knuckles on the ground as he's throwing that breaking ball. Anderson still looking for his first hit of the series, 0 for 7. You look at the strike from Myers, one of one. Well, the good thing for Garrett Anderson, he's not good, he's not an overpowering guy, but the arm angles are just so difficult. He's not used to looking for a breaking ball from down that way, from a running fast ball from down that way. Wow! What's he doing? Just sitting on a breaking ball? Man, even looked like he was even thinking about swinging at the first three pitches. Ball up, out over the plate. Maybe he's still just thinking middle in. That's about all he's been able to handle. Cross over to Mankiewicz just to keep an eye on her stat. Or Veritek boomers is pretty much keeping an eye on everything out there. Putting the sign to throw over. Paying attention to Erstad. We know he can run. Myers acquired from Seattle on August 6th. at it. Myers' mastery over Garrett Anderson continues. There's two out. Watch what Veritek did to help Embry get out of this inning. Excuse me. To help Timlin get out of it. Here's, here's you got Vladimir Guerrero. Look what he does. He puts the sign to throw over on and then look at where he's standing right there. He's acting like they're going to climb the ladder with the fastball. Now Vladimir's thinking high fastball. He comes back with the cut fastball, the late movement and look at where Vladimir was at. Veritek got that strikeout. We'll be back. Sox relievers have struck out Vladimir Guerrero and Garrett Anderson. And now the dangerous Troy Gloss at the plate against Keith Fulk. With the Red Sox beat in game four of this series last year when he was closing for Oakland. Now he has a chance to, it's all his, to get four outs. And Gloss swings and misses at strike one. Well, it's the end of the night. As far as the bullpen's concerned for Terry Francona, I mean, he did his job. Now you just have to sit back and let the players play. Not like we heard from Theo Epstein earlier. Okay, I'm the general manager. Let him play the whole game. Yep. You're right, Francona. Now, now it's up to the players. I mean, you put him in a spot where they have the best chance to succeed, as he obviously did with Myers. Theo knows that. Myers did his job. Timlin did his job. But the job's still not over. Yep. Well, not with Gloss at the plate, it's not over, that's for sure. Troy 0 for 2 in a walk tonight. Scored in the second. Yesterday was 3 for 3 with a homer and two doubles. Now, and that's why Terry Francona is not saying if it's a Royal or Wakefield for game three or four. They're both going to start in Boston. 
But Arroyo was a live arm in both of these first two games. He's up throwing now. Here goes the base runner, Erstad. And he was off by a mile. How about, how about this shot off of Kurt Schilling? And if there was such a thing as a, a five-run homer, there it was. Salmon went a long way. You should get credit for more than just yeah, one run when you hit it that far. Two and two to Gloss from Fall. There goes Erstad. But it doesn't matter because three different relievers have come in to strike out three of the heavy metal of the Boston Red Sox. Timlin, Myers, and Folk with three strikeouts. Matt Weiner and Steve Phillips back in studio. The Red Sox trying to take a 2-0 lead with two road games, something the Twins could not accomplish because of this sack fly in the 12th. What happened with Jock Jones? Well, ball hit just high enough. Jones couldn't get his weight shifted, been able to make a strong throw to the plate. Jeter scores. Twins took a lead in the top half of the inning, blew it, and lost the game in the bottom half. Astros, meanwhile, take a 1-0 lead on the Braves. Roger Clemens gets the win and four home runs to back him up. Matt, Steve, thank you. This has been the look for Mike Socha for about three minutes. Well, he's it's got every look that we've seen all night. He, remember yeah. we said you could fry an egg? Yep. I think we got an omelet going. Well, he's got every right. Take a look at what Troy Gloss was called out on. It has been a ball all night long, and then all of a sudden, in the most important part of the game, the biggest bat, a guy that hit a home run yesterday, all of a sudden, we talked about letting the players play. Well, Jerry Meals took the bat out of Troy Gloss's hand. So now in the ninth, Brendan Donnelly is into pitch. Mark Bellhorn swinging at the first pitch. Flies out to Vladimir Guerrero. There is one out. There's Gloss. You know, here's will tell you, Boomer. I mean, Tony, you, you've been there. I mean, if they miss a call on strike one, and even sometimes on strike two, you know, at, at least you got one left. Yeah. You know, you can get something done. But when they take the third one away from you, in a spot like that, where Erstad had just stole second base, I mean, it's just, it, 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 it's so hard to handle. Yeah. It is, and, and there's no remedy either. I mean, you know, Troy Glass is standing there, you know, trying to get a good pitch to hit. And his night's over with. I mean, yeah. more than likely, he won't have another at bat tonight. Manny Ramirez looks at ball one high. Manny sack fly his last time up in the seventh. Reason the Red Sox have a 4 3 lead. Scoring Johnny Damon. Also, saw so bases loaded walk in the second. After he almost hit a grand slam down the right field line. Brendan Donnelly, remember two, two years ago, boy, everybody on this the staff was wearing glasses out of the penny. If you're a yeah. hitter, when they throw with the heat, you know, Donnelly, and then they had Weber, and then of course now K Rod wearing the glasses. It's almost like Ryan Dern, the old Yankee pitcher that was so fast and so wild with the Coke bottle glasses. you got to be afraid to step in against these guys. I wonder where they can see it. See, that's the thing. I mean, you never look at their face. Just look, find the release point. Just don't worry about the glasses, any of that. Just find out where that hand with the baseball is going to be when they let it go. That's why watching Manny is so much fun because look how calm he is. He doesn't really, rarely gets excited up there. He's been in some tough situations here tonight. Under control, looking for a ball that he can handle. He has that same tempo all the yeah. time. Nice, comfortable swing. Never a whole lot of effort. Looking ahead to the Angel ninth. Normally you hear this line if you figure it's done. Jeff Devannon, Dallas McPherson, and then the new catcher, Benji Molina. But Devannon has two hits. McPherson has a hit. Molina catches the majority of the game, and Manny Ramirez has a hit. Down the line, oh, scooting over is Devannon. Manny's going to try for two. Here's the throw. Not in time. So Ramirez with his first hit on the night. 
at two yesterday. And that was the very quick sign. David Ortiz is coming up. Let's walk him intentionally for the second straight time. Yeah, Manny Ramirez is running out of the box, too. Ball's hit down the line. He was going to put the pressure on the van and to make a good throw the whole time. And he's put his head down, and he's running hard. He ran hard yesterday in the first did it too, remember? Yep. A big part of the game. So Ortiz intentionally passed for the second time. We'll put two on for Trot Nixon. And you mentioned Manny with the first hit of the night, but he has two RBIs. Yes. One on the walk, the other on the sack fly back in the seventh, which right now is the difference in this game. Austin now with ten hits tonight. Four runs, ten hits, no errors. Angels, three runs, seven hits, no errors. Red Sox again, like yesterday, have left nine on. They got two more on now. For Trot Nixon. Sports Center coming up when we're done with Scott Van Pelt and Steve Levy, Boston's own. This will break down this ball game. Astros slugfest. Boy, they've been slugging it under Phil Garner for the last six weeks. And Ricky Williams, Finn's furious. So we'll update that scenario. But meanwhile, Furious might be a word to describe Mike Sosha, who we just saw with Trot Nixon up. And we talk about matchups. You got Nixon, the left-handed hitter. We asked Mike Sosha, no left-hand in your bullpen. He said, you know, we looked at the ones that were available, and we felt like our right-handers would have better success than the ones that they could have acquired. You know, if, if Stairs, there's a guy who used to play ball here in the L.A. area. You know what I'm going to talk about in a minute. Trot Nixon fouls it off. One of the most ominous stares ever. Sidney Wicks, who played for UCLA, he used to stare down. I mean, Mike has not, that's been the look for about 10 minutes. Yeah. And he feels he's had his pocket picked tonight. Well, who was the coach that told you that? It might be a long night or whatever. Huh? Remember in the first or second? One of the angel coaches said. Yeah. Yeah. Broken bat, that'll be out of play. About all these broken yeah, well, bats, I can't tell it? you who it was, but called it. He was talking specifically about Cologne, one of the Angels. And how he likes to didn't paint say, the corners. Didn't say but... umpire Jerry Mills was, <laughs> quote, bad. Just said the wrong type of umpire for our starter tonight. Well, Cologne stepped up. I mean, they, they tried to take the game away from him early, Tony, and he just wouldn't let him do it. He, he did he step did, up. He but, pitched great. So did Pedro Martinez. Absolutely. What a, what a performance tonight by him. Both of these teams had opportunities to put extra runs on the board. And Nobody can bunt. No. The execution part of this game hasn't been good. Peel? No. He didn't go, but, you know, that'll just fry another egg. He, he got a dozen down there. A dozen eggs frying. No, he held it. Two and two to Nixon. We'll do it again. Trot did not play yesterday. He's over four tonight. He's just really getting back into shape. Yeah, he is. Yeah, that back problem to this thing and he had a quad problem after that but you know what last week was still a good week he and his wife Catherine his second child oh he's a real father now once you get to you're a real dad congratulations to them not only trying to pull the string didn't get it so the count is full you know, in some situations three and two one run lead you might send the runners, but with Ramirez and Ortiz, I you don't think so. I wouldn't expect them to no. go to be going. But you know what? Just, <laughs> just the way this game has gone tonight, they've been able to butt people over. No, you can't move. They, they didn't even. They no. were just leaning. They didn't even move. Well, you figure, look. You get Nixon and Mankiewicz, you take two cracks at a single. Yep. Mankiewicz is uh, 
two for two this postseason. Nixon can't get it done. Give him a shot. But the fundamentals in this game have been able to punt. The fielders haven't been able to make the play. That's so Catchers much not important. blocking balls. Most of that directed toward Anaheim. Yeah, tonight. and that's unfortunate for them because you, know, you get upset at umpires and, and things like that, but you really aren't helping you giving yourself an opportunity to be successful by doing the things that you know you got to do. And that's Mike Sosha talked about that today. He was kind of disappointed in uh, the execution of his team defensively and offensively yesterday. And today. And the biggest play of the game might be uh, Molina not blocking that ball and keeping it in front. Nixon up the middle. Ramirez rounding third. He'll score. Insurance. Nixon's the one. Five to three, Boston. Two-run lead for the Red Sox, but the guy responsible for three of them is once again Manny Ramirez. He is the one there on second base. Nixon battling a 3-2 count, a great at-bat there on the part of Trot. He finally wins the at-bat. Manny finally touches home. He hustled to get to second base on the ball hit down the left field line. He hustles home. Two RBIs, a run scored. Up to this point, MVP. Now Mankiewicz up. And that's another one well, by a different catcher, Benji Molina. And it, the Angels are not the type of team, as you pointed out all night, to give extra bases, 29 outs. Well, again, instead of... Well, maybe that ball got on him too hard, but instead of trying to shift the body and get the get that all that equipment in front of you, tried to backhand that ball. Gabe, welcome back, Kaplan. Here's the pinch runner. And Di Figgins makes the play oh, to get it play. himself. Ortiz at third. I've been broadcasting that long, but I don't know if I've ever written down four unassisted. <laughs> right. Nice. At first. Nice. At first base. What a play here. Erstad all out dive. He couldn't get to it. You're not going to have the contact play on with David Ortiz, Tony at third base. No. I mean, he just doesn't make any sense. No. He's, he's not quick enough to get in on a ball like that. Now the in, a second intentional walk of the inning goes to Jason Veritek, who's two-run homer in the sixth tied this thing. And that will load him up for Orlando Cabrera. Just not going to hold Boston. You know, two, three, four runs. It's just hard to do, especially when you're healthy. Yep. Scott Shields, who uh, Manny Ramirez unloaded on yesterday in that seven run fourth inning after they knocked Washburn out, he's throwing. You know, again, Boston, bases loaded first, nobody scored, bases loaded second, only one run on a walk. They say, wow, it's season one game one. The last time, nine times the Red Sox won game one in a series, they're going four and five in the series. They've lost seven straight game twos, the last win with the 86 series. So they're all scared, you know, if I had three, but I'm not comfortable. Well, the Angels have been real good at winning game two. Mm -hmm. And they had every chance to win this ball game tonight. They still do. Yes, they do if they get this out. Ortiz scores. 
stops. Three more runs. His first hit as a Red Sox is coming over from Montreal was a homer. But this one clears the bases. Three-run triple for Cabrera. 8-3 Boston. The ball hung right in the middle of the plate, and he short strokes this ball in the left center field. Garrett Anderson does a great job of just cutting it off and trying to get it back in. One hop throw to David Eckstein, but he doesn't have enough time to get a good throw to the plate. The Red Sox scored three. Break this thing. And, by the way, guess how many outs there were when they came in? <laughs> Two outs. Wow. So, in the end, they've come in here, and they're not done yet, and have scored 17 runs. They've been doing it all year yeah. long. Lead the majors in runs. Better have your act together. And the Angels, and they'll say they got squeezed at the plate, but there are a lot of plays they did not make. You're right. And now... Barring a miracle, they're going to go to Boston, down 0-2. They've been a wonderful road team, Anaheim, but Fenway in the postseason is a that's that's a tall order now. Just the confidence that, that Boston came into this series with, and why wouldn't you be when you've got Schilling and Pedro on the mound? I mean, Theo Epstein telling us before Game One, you know, we're, we're here hoping to win both. That, that's our plan. We, we, we feel like we should win both. And you know, right now, it looks like he was right. Euclid flies out to right. But not until the Red Sox hang a four spot and lead 8 3. Hey, folks, Steve Levy and Scott Van Pelt standing by for Sports Center. The Yankees had another Yankee like comeback at the stadium. Highlights on the way. And Roger Clemens helping the Astros get off to a good start. Boomer, can the monkey get five runs for the Angels? Back to you. All right, guys, thank you very much. Scott and Steve will be by when we're done here. Red Sox with the uh, three-run bases-clearing double by Orlando Cabrera. Four-run ninth, and now Falcon with all the biggest of margins. He's trying to pin this thing down for Pedro Martinez. So the Red Sox have come out here and scored 17 runs on 23 hits. And even the Monkees have been put away. You know, we, we had to figure the offense would be there for Boston Boomer. You, you, you knew the starting pitching would be there. The bullpen uh, vastly improved over a year ago. But the thing that so much of the time goes unnoticed with Boston is what a good, solid defensive team they are now. The plays made by Cabrera yesterday, a couple of solid plays. Millar has just been outstanding. He's made all the plays down there. They're not giving away bases. They're not giving away runs anymore as they were the first three months of the season. The UFC said they, they led in run score in the first three months, and they led in ERA, yet they were a 500 team. Jeff Devannon, Dallas McPherson, and Benji Molina. And I got to tell you something here. You would expect nothing less from Mike Sosha's club. You saw the two defensive play, uh, changes, Kapler and Wright and Reese in second. Full. Over to Mankiewicz, and there's one out. Well, just take a look at the Angel Bay. You know, you know they're crushed. They're down 8-3. How much of it? Not everybody on that top step. They've, they've, they've had comebacks. This imagine will be epic if it happens. But don't tell them that. What makes it so tough about folk is that Tony, he's not going to help you, man. No. He's not going to walk anybody. Well, meanwhile, as it nears 2 o'clock, the Old North Church in Boston, one if by land, two if by sea, three if the Red Sox are coming home with a 2 nothing lead. They're readying the lantern. Pokey Reese just in the game over to Mankiewicz and Anaheim is down to their final out. It's been done before. Coming down from 0-2, but only once the 2001 Yankees 
have gone then on the went losing two at home and then going on the road to to tie it and win the fifth game. 95 Mariners at three home games. But the Red Sox had games three and four at home and then won game five at Cleveland. 2001 we just described. Of course, last year Boston lost two in Oakland, won two scintillating games in Boston, and then Derek Lowe closed it out with the bases loaded in game five at Oakland. Doesn't happen often. Curtis Pry, a nice story this is, making the postseason roster. He's the pinch hitter. We will have game at three for you on ESPN at 4 o'clock Eastern, 1 o'clock on the West Coast on Friday. Kevin Mescobar for the Anaheim Angels against either Arroyo, who since he didn't pitch tonight, I think will be it, or Tim Wakefield. Now, guys, Boston has come in and, and kind of just pulled the plug, haven't they, while they put the charge into the back? They have. I mean, you know, 17 runs, 13 with two out. Bullpen and did a nice job tonight. Schilling, Schilling and Pedro. Pedro. It's quite a front end of the rotation when you can get 17 runs and 23 hits. Yep. How about Schilling now? Six and one with a 1.74 ERA and 12 postseason starts. Four and zero oh in his career against Anaheim, and he's three and zero oh against the Angels this year. And if need be, he would start in Game Five. That's it. Folk has gone through the ninth, and the Red Sox have won at 8-3 and grab a 2-0 lead going home to play game three. So, Tony, we got a date there? Yeah. Here. The game angels will give it a shot, but they're looking uphill. Boston wins at 8-3. Sports Center coming up next. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Kyle Peterson helping us down on the field. Rick Sutcliffe, Tony Gwynn, and all of us here in Anaheim, thanks for staying up late. I'm Chris Berman, 8-3, Boston.